light fluffy summery clouds in the air and not the chance of a drop of rain. It's going to be a bit of a scorcher instead as the men's road race gets underway on exactly the same circuit in and around Warwick that the women have just raced on. For the women, it was a seven uh, circuit race. The men will take this 16 kilometer circuit on 10 times. Going through Jewelry Streets, past Westgate, dropping down and out of Warwick uh, before the race, with barely a climb to mention in it, uh, goes through these Warwickshire fields, passing at first in a westerly direction towards Hampton. Switching back then and back into the northern fringe of Warwick. Passing back into the suburbs of Warwick and just skirting uh, Jury Street before it kicks out again in an easterly direction. Crosses the River Avon. Heading eventually for Royal Leamington Spa, which just about adjoins Warwick. Brushes with Victoria Park, which was uh, the host venue for the bowls and the para bowls here at Birmingham 2022, before a fast and fairly straightforward approach up Mighton Road towards the start-finish line where the laps, all ten of them, will be completed in the final time. That is where, just outside Warwick School, the bunch sprint, which uh, many pundits expect to see, will take place. So 16 kilometres in total, and the men will be taking it on uh, ten times. Huge crowds at the start line, which is simultaneously the finish line, and uh, that is the site that greets them, a peloton of 123 starters, uh, one significant name missing, but let's just have a look at uh, which riders are starting this race. We've got a uh, quartet of riders from Anguilla making their bow. Rowan Dennis won't be starting, we understand, rider number seven, so we can scrub his name off that list. Luke Platt, though, will from Australia, three riders from Bermuda, and a clutch of riders as well from Belize, including Brian Pope. Uh, we've seen a couple of his teammates already in action in the time trial, Oscar Quiroz being one of them, two riders from Botswana. Canada come here with a young and relatively inexperienced team. Um, but they also bring some of the riders that were part of their track program uh, to the road race. Two riders from Cyprus, three from the Cayman Islands. Uh, Dominica represented with two riders, and then England spearheaded by Fred Wright, Connor Swift, and Jake Stewart, who's local to this region, as well as Ethan Burner and Ben Turner. A very powerful England team who will look to try and uh, get Mark Cavendish, I'm sure, on the back foot. The island of Guernsey come with five riders. There are four riders, I think, from Ghana, um, including Henny ja Henry Jangma, who took part in the individual time trial. Gibraltar here with five riders, including two husbands of female riders from Gibraltar who took part in the women's race. Isle of Man then, Mark Christian, Matt Bostock, Sam Brand, Ben Swift, a resident of the Isle of Man, now Tom Mazone, and Mark Cavendish. If it comes to a sprint, he is, of course, the out-and-out -out favourite to take victory. Jersey with five riders, the British Virgin Islands with a couple. Lesotho also with representation in this uh, race. Malta with Aidan Buttigieg, who we saw, who's the first rider off in the individual time trial. Mauritius, once again, with a characteristically strong start list and expect them to go well. Alex Miller, a bronze medalist from Namibia in the cross-country mountain biking. Northern Ireland with a clutch of riders, uh, two of whom competed in the mountain bike competition just a few days ago. New Zealand, a powerful team with Shane Archibald, the lead-out man, Paddy Bevin, Aaron Gates, who's already won three gold medals at these games. Dion Smith, who's an outsider here, watch out for him. South Africa with Daryl Impey, who couldn't start the individual time trial, but he has recovered from stomach a stomach problem. Five uh, riders from Rwanda. John Archibald, silver medalist on the track, goes for Scotland. And in the company of three other teammates, including uh, Mark Stewart and Charlie El Aldridge, who crashed out of the uh, uh, mountain bike race recently. Swaziland with a rider, three from the Seychelles. Uh, the Turks and Caicos Islands have two riders here. Uganda have one. Luke Rowe, Owen Duell, Joe Holt, Will Roberts, and a certain Geraint Thomas uh, ride for Wales. And there are two riders from Zambia make up the start list. And that is all the riders uh, who will make up the start. And these were some of the teams signing on a little bit earlier today. And uh, Rochelle, there's a real sense of, uh, I don't know, there's a good vibe about this race. The riders seem super relaxed, uh, both those who are taking part maybe for the first time in a big race like this, but also the really big names from the World Tour. Um, they're approaching this, I think, with a degree. I think it's going to be an explosive race, and there's a lot of ambition in this race. Yeah, Ned, as you say, when we were watching them uh, sign on, they were just so relaxed, having a chat among each other from different nations. 
Certainly a lot, lot of nations here, 124 riders from 37 different nations. So very social and relaxed at the start. Yep, there's John Archibald from Scotland, looking very focused and just cooling down with a fan in the uh, holding area behind the stage. Ghana with Manny Antony, uh, Manny Arthur, I should say, Manny Arthur, a Londoner, uh, who runs the organisation, the Black Cyclist Network, who have got a huge crowd outside Warwick, uh, Warwick Castle to cheer on the Ghanaian team, who he has helped significantly. There is Geraint Thomas, third place at the Tour de France, third place in the individual time trial after his crash but he comes uh, to this race hoping to stick it to the Isle of Man and make life very difficult for his former teammate, Mark Cavendish. A couple of th those are the two riders from the Turks and Caicos Islands. They are um, Sean Rogers and Devon Williams. 31,000, that's the population of the Turks and Caicos Islands in the West Indies, and they come with uh, two of those 31,000 here to the Commonwealth Games. Rwanda, as you'd expect from an emerging powerhouse in African cycling, got a good representation of five riders here. Jersey 2, who've been consistent throughout these games with Rhys Hidrio and uh, Jack Rabor, both of whom, whom took part in the mountain bike cross country race amongst their five. Riders warming up, it could be an explosive start on the rollers then. The five riders from Canada coming to the start as well. Someone who've had a few days off uh, since their uh, action at the, uh, at the velodrome. And here's the Welsh team. Geraint Thomas, Owen Dool and Luke Rowe, all of whom come straight from the Tour de France to the Commonwealth Games. I think Geraint will be very determined to have a hard race today, especially uh, after his misfortune in the individual time trial, where he ran into the barricades and had a crash. Still managed to come third, but he'll be very aggressive today. There's Jack Bauer of New Zealand waving to the crowd as he lines up alongside five teammates, including Paddy Bevin just to his left there, and uh, Campbell Stewart, who uh, raced on the track as well, just standing to his right. Guernsey have got uh, five riders here, including... Uh, including James Rowe and Michael Serafin, who we've seen in action. And this team from Australia. Luke Plapp, probably uh, one of their best hopes of victory here. He's a very versatile rider. But they are missing Rowan Dennis, who doesn't uh, line up. The riders introducing uh, one another. That is uh, from Ghana. That is Henry Jamba. Uh, Jangma who raced the individual time trial. Here's the team of England with Fred Wright waving to the crowd. Connor Swift alongside him. They've got a very, very strong team. They don't have a rider, Rochelle, who can match Mark Cavendish in a sprint, uh, but they've got, to a man, a lot of power in that team, and they can disrupt. Well, they're uh, actually in company of every single other team that doesn't have a sprinter that can match Mark Cavendish, so I can expect this will be a very, very hard attacking race. Cavendish knows what's about to hit him. He and his Isle of Man team will be attacked and attacked and attacked because every other team needs to get rid of Mark Cavendish. He's the only acknowledged out-and-out -out sprinter in this team and he's a problem for absolutely everybody else in this race. And it's that simple. It really is that simple. Now, how Mark Cavendish will deal with that pressure remains to be seen because Rochelle, he could use his team in a defensive ploy and just try and uh, track down the, the big attacks that he knows will come, or he could turn the tables on everyone else and he and the company of riders like Ben Swift could go on the offensive, which is something that he did straight away in winning the British National Championships back in June. Yeah, I think it's a safer option for Mark Cavendish to uh, go on the attack early and just try to neutralise any of those thoughts that uh, they're going to be put under pressure from all of the other teams. Mark Cavendish is in great form and he's not being quiet about wanting to win this race at the Commonwealth Games. He's wearing his gold glasses, so he means business today. Countdown is on, the race is about to get underway. Commonwealth Hens Road Race at Birmingham 2022. The last action from the cycling program is underway. 160 kilometres when the flag drops of predominantly flat Warwickshire terrain in glorious sunshine. And one big race favourite against the hundred and uh, well, the best part of 155 riders who want to deprive him of a Commonwealth Games gold. It's Mark Cavendish against the rest.
So out they go. Now the flag will drop once they have got all out of Warwick in around about three kilometres time from here. With Warwick Castle in the backdrop, they'll see that site ten more times as they go out on ten laps of uh, this beautiful circuit in Warwickshire. Climbing up to Jewry Street now in the neutralised rollout, being controlled, being controlled by the uh, by the race director's car. Just hearing about one more non-starter, and it's Justin Williams, rider 21 from Belize. Justin Williams, along with Rowan Dennis, are not starting this race. Fabulous crowds. That is Ghana Corner there, which has been orchestrated and organised by Anthony Arthur. Uh, sorry, Manny, oh, Anthony, sorry, Manny Arthur, uh, Manuel Arthur, who is riding in this race for Ghana. And uh, he has encouraged his... Uh, Black, Black Cycling Network from London to uh, head for Ghana Corner. And look at these crowds now, all the way up Jewelry Street. Absolutely brilliant how many people who've made their way to watch the men's race in particular, which goes off at uh, lunchtime. So the neutralisation at the start just gives the riders a little bit of time to settle in and find their position. Uh, check their bikes, make sure there's nothing mechanical, mechanically wrong going with it. Mike Cavendish there just looking uh, quite relaxed, but he has got a massive job to do today. Not just him, his team. His Mark team. Christian alongside him in the blue helmet, who rides for the Aeolo Cometa team of uh, Alberto Contador and Ivan Basso. He'll be uh, required to have the ride of his life if they're going to hold on to Mark Cavendish's chance of bringing this back to a bunch sprint. Well, in effect, he's only as strong as his team today, isn't he? He really does need... There's a crash in the neutral zone. A touch of wheels there. One of the riders from Namibia who's gone down, that's John Paul Berger. Riders just picking themselves up. One of the riders from Anguilla as well, Delroy Carty, he's down. Oh. Just riders just riding into the back of one another. Very lucky for that Australian rider, Miles Stockson, that he wasn't affected by that. But I think it was just those two riders who actually hit the deck. Delroy Carty and uh, the rider from Namibia there, John Paul Berger. And John Archibald is off the back. Well, they'll all get back on because they'll keep the race neutralised. Uh, yep. The red flag hadn't gone down, which means that uh, any crashes in the neutral zone will be allowed to get back on before they drop that red flag. He's doing that thing where he's just dropping his head a little bit as if um, that's often characteristic of a rider who's just doing a bit of a systems check and is feeling a bit of pain as well. But John Archibald, he's experienced enough to know that he doesn't need to go too hard here just needs to ride his way back up to the bunch because as you quite rightly say Rochelle Martin Bridgewood the race director knows that there are riders off the back there he is and he's holding them so he's going to delay the flag drop until everybody is back in well hopefully John Archibald's okay because he came into this Commonwealth Games in the form of his life he's been uh, very very aggressive on the track had a pretty solid time trial and uh, he will really be hoping to not have done any damage John Archibald just making his way back to the bunch. So three, four riders off the back, still trying to get on. Not really unusual to see crashes in the neutral zone because it is where the riders are super, super nervous. The pace there is controlled. There is a bit of a pinch point on Jewelry Street there as well, isn't there? There's the speed bumps to contend with and the barriers do come in significantly just when they turn left-handed. So they want Archibald and the other riders back on as quickly as possible and they're slowing the bunch right down now. Archibald's made his way back, but there's a few others still off the back, at least one, I think. John Paul Berger from uh, Namibia is back oh, and Archibald needs a mechanical, so he's got a mechanical here and that information is being relayed straight away to race radio, so Martin Bridgewood knows that Archibald is still off the back. This is far from ideal for Archibald. Though. I know, I know. He's not under too much pressure because they do need to wait till he gets back on. So that was a smart move just to double check whatever he was checking back there on the bike, making sure it was all OK. So Mark Cavendish right on the front. Ben Swift as well in the white helmets and the uh, yellow shoes. So John Archibald's still not happy here. Yeah, 
he's lost one of his numbers and he needs some assistance from the car. Something not quite right with his bike. He may have uh, bumped the rear derailleur and not getting all of his so gears. Get through kilometre zero and they're going to keep rolling through. And there are still a couple of riders off the back, including uh, Namibia's John Paul Berger. I don't think we've seen him get back yet. Well, John Archibald's not actually riding on disc brakes, and I think he, he stopped before just to adjust his rear brakes, but uh, he's not entirely happy, so we'll see if he has a bike change here. Well... John Archibald is uh, getting the assistance that is required of him. By him, I should say. Hidden behind that car. Looks like it's going to be a bike change. Yeah, they've obviously had a look at uh, what he was worried about, and uh, it's a bike change for John Archibald, which is uh, really going to play on his mind now for the rest of the race. It's, it's very hard to uh, switch to a spare bike. Seat's a bit low there, so they'll need to come up next to him and adjust that. Doesn't look like it's his spare bike, actually. Does no, it? it's, it's definitely not. It's so a different brand of bike, I think. I don't know if he can even get his pedals into that. He only seems to have got his pedals but in. That, but uh, you're right. That that saddle looks too low for him. Yeah. The position is not right at all. So, quite a tumultuous start to this road race for John Archibald, which is uh, not what he would have wanted at all. That needs adjusting. He's going to have to come to a halt again and get that saddle raised. Well, what was interesting about that, Rochelle, is the bike was the most accessible bike, wasn't it? It was on the edge yes, of the, the roof right. rack, so normally that's where you put the team leader's bike, replacement bike. He seems happy with that saddle position. No, I think what he's doing is just bearing with it until they fix his bike. Because uh, he, hasn't, he hasn't asked for the car to come up, so I think they're staying on the side of the road there, fixing his bike. Uh, right. And then once his bike's fixed, he'll jump back onto that one. So that seems to be what's happening. Well, the race is going to start, whether he's on the right bike or not. And uh, straight away, Isle of Man swarming all over the front of this race with Paddy Bevin as well from uh, New Zealand, just policing things. Wales waiting for that opportunity. Garrett Thomas very vocal about his intention to attack this race. Now, the Isle of Man, though, Paddy Bevin stretching things out and uh, Mark Cavendish straight on his wheels. So Cavendish leading from the front. This is characteristic of the way he, already characteristic of the way he raced the British National Championships team leader the race favorite on second wheel and he's, he's making a real exhibition of this he's making a point with his team I'm just asking for his teammates to come up for a chat Scotland on the offensive now they need to be careful about the pace given that John Archibald's having trouble at the back well that was obviously pre preordained and pre-planned to some extent it's Sean Flynn uh, who's attacking from Scotland. Wales are marking that move as well. Team radios are uh, used in this race. Northern Ireland now and uh, New Zealand. It's a soft attack. No one's really committed to this tactic yet of uh, really attacking the race. Joe Holt is the rider from Wales, just looking rounds. Moves through to the front now. This is the rider from the uh, the Cayman, uh, from the Turks and Ca Turk and Caicos Islands. Well, disappointed to have a mechanical already. Devon Williams, uh, who's got a mechanical. From the Tur well, that's off the back of the peloton at the moment, and that looks like a potentially terminal uh, mechanical situation. Certainly no rush to uh, get him get him back in the race at the moment. It's a fairly cautious start now. Jersey take it up, and Australia launching an attack on the left-hand side of the road. It's Miles Scotson who's attacking. Well, Australia and New Zealand both on the attack. That's Paddy Bevin and Miles Scotson. And with them, Mark Christian from the Isle of Man. So It's very interesting that Australia have had to change their tactic too because they were hoping to have Caleb Ewan here. This is actually a disadvantage to Mark Cavendish as we see another attack go now from England. Yeah, this time it's from England. That's 
Ben Turner from England. That's such a brilliant classics campaign. Scotland as well involved <laughs> already. Wales, England, New, New Zealand, Australia, all uh, asking questions already. Bermuda with a, with a rider towards the front as well in that pink jersey, that very characteristic jersey. This is going to be the pattern for the Ireland man. It's going to be a very, very hard uh, race to control. Wales chucking riders into the fray. Yeah, and as I was saying before, that the uh, fact that Australia doesn't have Caleb Ewan, their sprinter, they won't be uh, riding the same tactics as the Isle of Man, whereas Mike Cavendish would have had a little bit more support in closing things down had Caleb Ewan have been on the start line. Scotland developing this attack now with another rider from Wales, all strung out there, almost single file all the way round on this uh, exit from Warwick as they turn, head in a northerly direction and eventually hit out east. But a little group of four or five riders has prized it away from the front of the bunch now. Including uh, one rider from the Isle of Man who's looking round. That's Ben Swift who's got himself up the road. And that's a great tactic from the Isle of Man. So Ben Swift on the attack now with the white helmet and the red kit of the Isle of Man. And that will uh, uh, force some of the other teams to work because you can't let Ben Swift uh, get up the road in a good quality breakaway. Yeah, so Ben Swift will roll through for turns, even though that they eventually wanted to come back for a sprint. But uh, it's a good tactic to make the other teams work and uh, have to close those gaps. First glimpse of Fred Wright towards the uh, front of the race as well. Fre Fred Wright riding for England. And the two rider riders for Wales who are most active at the moment are Will Roberts and Joe Holt. Bit of a gap there for this rider from Scotland. Now yeah, with 152 corners to go, he'll want some company. Long way to race by yourself out in front. And unfortunately, that breakaway probably won't work for him. He's trying to pull some riders away from the peloton, but the peloton very well glued together at the moment. Well, it's got, we've got quite a few riders dropping off the back, I'm hearing on race radio. Quite a number already succumbing to the pace being driven on at the front. Perhaps unsurprisingly, as Sean Flynn rides on the front. Well, it was interesting because Scotland were on the attack right from the start when uh, John Archibald was having trouble with his bike, so it may uh, have made things very difficult for John Archibald down the back. So the sole representative of Grenada, Red Walters, who we saw in the individual time trial. Red Walters just on the front of the peloton and uh, looking good, just driving it on. He's, brought, he's joined by Joe Holt from Wales. And those two have a little bit of a gap. So Red Walters and Joe Holt are off the front. This is how Red Walters actually, without any rushing room at all, just straight off the wheel of the three riders in front. Uh, big acceleration from the man from Grenada and he finds himself with the Welshman Joe Holt off the front. The uh, question is, Joe Holt's on the radio, will he commit to this move? Just checking with his teammates what they think about him doing some turns here. Shall I ride, he's asking them, and I don't know what the answer is tactically yet for Wales. Let's see. A strong ride from uh, Red Walters. It is a strong ride, and he's doing all the work on the front with Joe Holt on his wheel. That will be the determining point now, when Red Walters flicks his elbow, will Holt come through and work? It looks like he will. Let's have a look. No communication directly between these two riders. There's there the flick of the elbow. Holt mm. is not committing yet. I don't no. think he's committing. Just sit on the wheel. So Walters has to do all the work on his own. Yes, it's a good tactic from Wales there, if they want it to come back and it's not the ideal breakaway. If they don't come through, Red Walters will eventually give up. Doing a great job at the moment, but can he do that for 150 kilometres? Well, race radio at the moment is full of riders being dropped, so there's a lot of damage being done at the back of the peloton at the moment with uh, the less experienced riders uh, dropping away. Also from the Turks and Caicos Islands, it's their second rider, Sean Rogers. So Devon Williams and Sean Rogers, sadly, at the moment, already off the back and in difficulty.
So, Holt and uh, Rogers, this is the front of the bunch. And uh, looks like New Zealand, England... Well, Wales are up there, they're obviously not going to ride at the moment, but New Zealand now launch a counter-attack. Good tactic on the front there with uh, New Zealand are just slowing up the pace and a big attack on the right-hand side of the road. I think that might be Aaron Gate, you know, the three-time gold medalist from the track. So, New Zealand then, and uh, Gate prizes a group of seven riders away, including another Welsh rider, an Australian, but that, uh, that little group gets shut down again and the counter-attacks come. Looks like that was a rider from the Seychelles trying to get across. A little narrowing in the road here as the barriers uh, creep in, and Red Walters and Joe Holt. Now Joe Holt is coming through and is committing to this move and is working, so these two riders just developing. And of course, what this does is it means that Wales don't have, at this point, any responsibility to ride at the front. So the first breakaway of this race is formed. What kind of lead will they be allowed to, uh, to gain? This is the bunch. How far back are they at the moment? No time gaps on the screen, but uh, you can see it for yourselves. It's no more than about, no more than around about five or six seconds. That's around about it. Well, it's the Isle of Man, predictably enough, who uh, have to uh, just keep this under control. But Rochelle, there's absolutely no reason to be too alarmed by this breakaway. They can allow this gap to go right out. Yeah, I think it's a big uh, decision for the Isle of Man to get on the front so soon and uh, really take the initiative because th then every break that goes, the rest of the pelotons is going to look at the Isle of Man to do the chasing. Yeah, besides, you keep this gap close, it's going to encourage more and more riders to try and get across the gap and get up the road. Well, they've ne nearly caught back. It's only four seconds difference between the breakaway. So it's Scotland now that go out on the uh, chase just to close that breakaway down. They've only got a, a bridge across a gap that's less than 100 metres, and there it is. So they're right on them, and this one will come back. So Red Walters still riding. I think Joe Holt probably uh, won't contribute anymore because this move itself is going nowhere. Ooh. Oof, that was close, wasn't it? That was very in the close. Background. And again, this peloton will just pinch down a little bit as they come over this gentle rise in the road. 47.8 kilometres to go, over 160 kilometre race, racing for just over 12k. It's slightly on the shorter side for a men's race, one day race. It's Scotland and England now they want to push the pace. New Zealand are covering the moves very well. It's like Fred Wright. Just pushing on, not with total commitment, but Fred Wright takes over now for England and looks round. Almost, almost a little bit unsure as to what to do with this group. There must be about 10, 12, 10 riders possibly just off the front. Another England teammate trying to chase across to him. I think that was Sam Watson, the under-23 national road race champion. Really like the look of this England team. Watson, Connor Swift, Fred Wright, Jake Stewart, Ethan Vernon and Ben Turner. Thomas Own from uh, the Isle of Man has got one of three onboard cameras. And uh, that is uh, their clutch of riders from Bermuda there, you're looking at, in the pink. One of the, uh, the riders from Cyprus as well. Mattia Guillemot as well from uh, Canada. We can see the pace is quite high because it's, like, it's really strung out now. Australia rushing forward. New Zealand have looked like they're trying to get in a move and uh, they send a rider off the front, taking with him one of the uh, Irish riders. Not the Irish riders, excuse me, the English riders and the Australians. It's Jack Bauer on the offensive now from New Zealand. Luke Durbridge is the Australian rider. Sam Watson from England is on the front. One of the South Africans as well, just uh, surfing the wheels. Three relatively inexperienced riders at this very high level, but one world-class rider in Darrell Impey. 
uh, from the South African team, who would be, again, a real danger if a small group gets away. One of the strongest riders in the World Tour. New Zealand really want to push the uh, pace at the uh, front here. Campbell Stewart uh, doing the work on the front from New Zealand, but not to well, not the total commitment. Will Roberts from Wales. And the next attack comes from England. And again, it's Fred Wright just uh, just working on the front. Paddy Bevin coming with him from uh, New Zealand, and it's this kind of move, Rochelle. This kind of, these kind of riders, Paddy Bevin, Fred Wright, this is the real danger for the Isle of Man. If a group like this really attacks and gets clear, then the Isle of Man will have to shut and ban. Yeah, they need to keep a few riders from Isle of Man up the front just to slip onto those wheels. Oh. Another big uh, attack now. Ben Swift is the only rider at the front from the Isle of Man policing things. I think that's a rider from Northern Ireland who's attacked there. The Northern Ireland and Guernsey kits are very, very similar from this distance, but that is one of the riders from Northern Ireland coming with Ben Turner as they come towards the uh, start-finish line and the first lap is almost completed. Ben Turner from England hits the front. You can see Ben Turner was putting on a bit of pace there. It's now Luke Durbridge from Australia on the left side of the road. Darrell Impey as well from South Africa and his teammate. A couple of riders, so some really big-name riders starting to show themselves towards the front. Mark Christian is the, uh, is the rider from the Isle of Man in the blue helmet and the red. He's working for Mark Cavendish to try and make sure that whatever group gets up the road, they can control it. Some of the stronger riders, though, lurking. Close towards the front. Cyprus have got two riders in, in this race. There is one of them. In that, uh, in that or light orange and white kit. So Ben Swift from the Isle of Man will lead them through. Uh, the start-finish line on the right-hand side of the road, and no breakaway has got clear just yet. Sam Watson on his wheel from England. There are nine laps remaining, one complete, no breakaway, but we have lost a few riders out of the back. And the next series of attacks come, Australia on the offensive again. Sam Fox it was, uh, the mountain bike racer who's just attacked off the front from Australia. Here he is, Fox, with Mark Christian from the Isle of Man, one of the Canadian riders, and Ben Turner of the Ineos Grenadiers in England, the Yorkshireman. And there's a reaction there from New Zealand, and it's coming in the shape of Campbell Stewart. So Campbell Stewart's getting across. Group of four riders have just come off the finishing line a few seconds uh, down as they pass Garner corner again and Mark Christian piles the pressure on. But that group, that little attack has been neutralised as they head now left-handed and onto Jewelry Street. And this is where, during the neutralised rollout, there was a little bit of a crash as the road just widens down either side of the first speed bump that they take on through effectively the high street here. And here is the damage at the back. This is a the second or third little group of riders who've come across the line uh, already over a minute down on the front of the race. There is a uh, rule that if the riders are close to being 10 minutes uh, down on the front of the race, they will be taken out when they come over the line by the UCI, by the UCI commissaires. Now they drop down and out of Warwick and out into the open country again. Again, one of the uh, Ghanaian right two of the riders from Ghana, just in this group off the back. One of the two Zambian riders as well. Red Walters from Grenada has attacked again. He's doing really well, Walters. Just to be able to do this, Rochelle, you shouldn't underestimate how hard this is. Yeah, it is. When the uh, pace is quite solid on the front of the peloton, like we saw, it really does take a lot of power and uh, speed to be able to get off the front. So Red Walters is having a hard first part of this race. Well, his first attack was really explosive. The second attack is almost more drifting off the front and finding himself there. There he goes, on the left-hand side of the road, just accelerated past the rider from New Zealand. It was Campbell Stewart, and uh, developed that lead. And Campbell Stewart wasn't uh, wasn't minded to go with him, so he finds himself just a few seconds off the front of the peloton. Well, the 
peloton's allowing him to get this gap as they don't feel he's a big threat out there by himself. As we look to the back here. John well, Pratt, John's that is. Yep. Who's, whose wife, Elaine, uh, crashed and effectively crashed out of the women's road race. Riding for Gibraltar. A few riders trying to bridge across now to Walters. And I think he's being shut down once again. Looks like a combination of Canada, New Zealand, Isle of Man. They're all coming across. There's another little counter-attack. A little group of potentially dangerous group of seven or eight riders just off the front of the bunch now. They're uh, looking round rather than looking ahead, and there's no sense of a coordinated effort amongst those riders. But uh, it's a disorderly look to the front of the peloton, and they are piling off the front. Red Walters, Fred Wright. That's Joe Holt again, second time we've seen him off the front. Ben Turner from England, rider from Northern Ireland. Cameron Stewart, I think it is, from New Zealand. Super active at the front of the uh, bunch so far, as we saw in the women's race, just attack after attack, making it very hard for one of these breakaways to stick. Uh, England being very aggressive. They are. And they've, got, they've got the right riders to do this tactic, that's the point. All these riders are very, very good one-day racers. Fred Wright, Jake Stewart, Ethan Vernon, Ben Turner, it's what they're built to do. And so they can be super aggressive. Try and break this rate up, race up and put uh, Mark Cavendish's team under stress. Oh, mm. bike change for Archibald. So the repairs must have been affected. Presumably he's back on his uh, original bike. Has it got the race number on it? No, it hasn't. So he's picked up another spare bike, but that is different from the one that he uh, received before. Yeah, wide handlebars, a little bit too long for him. So trouble for John Archibald here. This is all going uh, far from to planned for John Archibald. He's had such a busy program, Archibald. Rode the time trial, taken on the, ra the road race. Mm, and of course great. competed on the track in the endurance events as well, picking up a medal. What a great day for John Archibald. He's had a lot of work to do. I'm not sure he's actually been in the group at, at this point, as we see New Zealand and England still very keen to push the pace on the front of the peloton. Well, Mark Cavendish just making his, his way over to that breakaway all by himself. Not a bad move. Oh, that's typical of how he raced the British National Championships. You're quite right, Rochelle. There he is, Mark Cavendish, in around about seventh place in this little group off the front. Luke Durbridge is involved, as well as one of the South Africans. Aaron Gate, the three-time gold medalist from the track. That's the rider from New Zealand. Ben Turner, the classic specialist from the Ineos Grenadiers. He's riding for England. Devon Williams has had to abandon, sadly. He's the first abandon on the road so far. He's riding for the Turks and Caicos Islands. He had that mechanical, and I just simply don't think they could get him a spare bike. But Cavendish is in this group off the front, and that is exactly uh, what the Isle of Man would have wanted, because who's going to ride on the front now to bring this group back? And Cavendish has smuggled himself into this move, and that might change the way this race unfolds. But the, again, the complication with Cavendish is here. None of these riders will want to ride with him. There he is, second from last in this group coming back, Geraint Thomas, almost inevitably hit the front of the bunch there and has, in a trice, brought the peloton back to that Cavendish group. It's all come back together again, courtesy of Geraint Thomas of Wales, he's shut that down, shut Mark Cavendish down, as Ben Turner from Yorkshire plows on. The revelation of the Classics campaign for the Ineos Grenadiers, one of the many revelations. He was an intrinsic part of their success in Paris-Roubaix, and uh, the way they approach their classics campaign. But this group is still just about clear. And this time it's Stevie Williams from Wales, who's having to work on the front to, to try and get across. There well, it is, a group of some 12 riders at the front. Aaron Gate and Luke Durbridge are very keen to push this pace on. 
try and establish a break, even if it's not the original one. Slight little uphill rise. You couldn't call it a hill. You couldn't even call it a hillock. It's just a tiny little lump on the road, but it is potentially a launch pad. Daryl Impey is in this group on the wheel of Aaron Gate in that white uh, kit, predominantly white kit with the green and yellow. Mark Stewart uh, here from Scotland. And a good rider. So this is a powerful group. And it still contains, I think we get confirmation, Mark Cavendish. But they've been shut down again. The front of the peloton comes back to that... Uh, that group had a very dynamic start to this race. 137 kilometers to go. We've had uh, 125 kilometers, uh, 122.5 kilometers. Sorry, <laughs> my maths is all over. 22.5 kilometers. That's Daryl Impey driving this group on from South Africa. One of the Namibian riders is in this uh, the front group who have been caught back. Well, ben, ben Turner's been very, very active. Active. Luke Rowe now on the offensive, expressing himself in the colours of Wales. A rider who, when he's riding for his trade team, Ineos Grenadiers, almost never gets to attack a race except in the uh, one-day classics. Uh, but Luke Rowe goes on the offensive and brings Luke Durbridge with him. Is Cavendish on his wheel? I think he is. Cavendish is on the wheel. He's such a small figure. That's definitely him on the wheel of Luke Durbridge. So he's still animating things at the front of the race. He's found a very smart wheel to sit on, given Luke Durbridge is one is. of the tallest guys in the race. Very smart. Well, perfect. And the evidence is, from what we've seen, that uh, Mark Cavendish is on scintillating form again, just as he was when he won the British National Champs. There he is, on third wheel, but they won't want to drag Mark Cavendish clear in the group, so... He's doing so much work, investing so much in the beginning of this race, all of which he hopes will uh, come his way to his benefit at the end of the race. Well, Durbridge is not letting this come back together too easily. He wants to push the pace. Will he get some assistance? Well, that group of seven or eight riders has been caught again. Another South African rider comes through. He's taken a bit of a spill over the last couple of days, heavily bandaged on his... Uh, his left arm there. Sam Watson is the England rider on the wheel of uh, Luke Rowe and Aaron Gate of uh, New Zealand. And another attack comes from England. And once again, it's Fred Wright. Alarm bells every time Fred Wright attacks. Geraint Thomas is uh, live to this threat. And Thomas, with I think Durbridge again, shuts Fred Wright down very, very quickly. Can't, you know, well, or he gets across to him. And this is a group that is dangerous now for the Isle of Man. The Isle of Man have to do something about this. This is precisely the kind of dangerous group that could end their race, potentially. Yeah, Garen Thomas is uh, happy to make this hard and roll through. It's exactly the right uh, combination. Fred Wright, Luke Plapp, I think it is, and Geraint Thomas. They are teammates as well. We've got a rider from New Zealand there, so a lot of the big teams represented at the front of the race are with a rider from South Africa. So Isle of Man have to do something about this, and uh, they do. Ben Swift bringing it back for the Isle of Man. Well, a few more riders coming across, but there's still a uh, significant little gap there. Garrett Thomas really wanting to push this one. So Thomas on the offensive. This is what the crowd came here to see, isn't it? Dragging a group of seven or eight riders off up the road. And uh, the peloton looks a little bit uncoordinated. You can see a rider just firing off on the left-hand side of the road. While this gap is uh, potentially almost bridgeable, there is a sense that this breakaway is a really dangerous one because all the big teams are represented. Who's going to ride to shut them down? That's Cavendish there, I think, trying to respond in the white helmet and the red kit from the Isle of Man. Finds himself on the front of the bunch, Mark Cavendish. Yep, marked by the two Englishmen that will not come through for a turn. Cavendish is finding himself in a difficult position here. Here he comes, I think. I'm sure that's Cavendish on the front of the, the bunch now. Having to shut down that counter-attack, but the group at the front are going clear. Now the Pelton chasing hard, but not uh, consistently, are they? They're rolling over, looking at each other, looking where everyone is. They're not far behind, though. 
There's a little bit of disharmony. There is a little bit of disharmony in the front of the race, and it's motivating riders to try and chip across now. And uh, this is the front of the race, and you can see how close they are now. So Australia um, trying to get another rider in the move to join Luke Platt. Fred Wright still pushing on. You can see that was Luke Clapp from Australia who just closed oh, that Luke down. Luke Clapp was the, ride, the Australian rider who came across. And there's a huge, almost a peloton there of around 20 riders off the front. Well, this break's too big now, you, you would think, to be successful. You'd think it would come back together, but there's still some riders in that front group that are very keen to split this up. Very, very dynamic start. We've got a rider from Guernsey now working on the front. Seven, eight, nine, it's all come back together, and there's a gap of around about two, three seconds back to the bunch. Tell you what, this has been a fast start for the men's race. Almost 30 uh, kilometers still uh, already done. Miles Scotson, it is one of the, the Australian rider who is uh, at the front of the race with Luke Platt. And this is how stressful it is at the back. This is Corey Williams of Belize who we're on board with. Tom Mazone from the Isle of Man team. And it's all shut down again. But still we have the presence of uh, Ben Turner and Geraint Thomas and Fred Wright on the front with Stevie Williams from Wales. to some real firepower. Another rider, Sam Watson, three English riders in the top five at the moment as Wales and England take control of the front of the race. And we've got uh, Miles Scotson and Luke Clapp, the two Australians. Isle of Man's Ben Swift. And there's Mark Cavendish, just tucked in on the wheel of his teammate Ben Swift. Oh, what a race we're seeing unfold here. A lot of looking around. They want to get that right composition in the breakaway. Now, everything being closed down at the moment. Now it's Stevie Williams from uh, Bahrain Victorious who attacks from Wales. Then Turner going with him. Turner has marked and animated so many moves so far. Oh, the big man, Ben Turner, he's certainly done a lot of work. There's Lucas Platt from Australia, he's got the green and gold stripe on the helmet. Jack Bauer is there from uh, New Zealand. Jack Bauer, Ben Swift from the Isle of Man. One of the Scottish riders. There is Mark Cavendish, not too far from the front. And Just watching attack. things as it calms down as Canada go on the offensive now. Attack from the Canadian, the right side of the road. The peloton hasn't responded. Everyone looking around. It's Wales that respond now. And New Zealand as well. Almost 30 kilometres of racing already done. 130.9 to go. Well, you can see little splits in the peloton happening. The race has just been repeated attacks until this point. And they'll keep attacking until a break is established. The problem is, on a course like this, Rochelle, it can go on forever, can't it? Because there aren't these hills, there aren't these moments, there aren't... There isn't really on the course anywhere where you can make the difference and prize a group clear. So this could go on for a while yet. Yeah, it takes some time until you see some tired legs when those gaps really open up. Right, is at the back there from Jersey in the uh, red and white kit. That's uh, Jack Rabor, who raced the cross-country mountain bike. And alongside him. Uh, Andreas Miltiadis of Cyprus, one of two Cypriot riders. Canada oh, on the front again, trying to push the pace. Always closely covered by the uh, English and Isle Man. Genuinely get a sense that Ben Swift uh, for the Isle of Man is relishing this task. It's exactly the kind of job that he does uh, these days, late on in his career. Of course, he's won some big races. He's come close to winning some even bigger ones as well. As we have an attack from one of the Rwandan riders. Counter-attack from Wales. Just 
looking over the shoulder to Mauritius see who's as well him. on the advance. South, South Africa. Africa. Close down again. This is how we're going to see it play out for a little while. That's the first attack we've seen from Wales, Owen Du, who raced the Tour de France. Northern Ireland now on the attack. Wales with double representation in this move. Luke Rowe still there, Owen Du. They've got three, They've got three Welsh riders there. There are almost. So it's a great move from Wales. Luke Rowe committing to it, Luke Durbridge going with him from Australia, Ben Turner. Once again, those three powerful riders. The rider from Northern Ireland has smuggled himself in. And it's Ben Swift who's actually gone uh, with him. And that quite similar looking kit from the Isle of Man, slightly more purplish. Uh, but Luke Rowe and Owen Dool, two of the very best from Wales, are just a little bit ahead of the race. But a rider from Gibraltar has committed at the front of the peloton to bring this one back. New Zealand haven't made the uh, selection. So, unless the rider from Gibraltar can make the junction himself, I think they will get assistance from uh, New Zealand, potentially. The Mauritius have a rider in the move. A lot of riders getting frustrated that these uh, breakaways that they form just don't continue. A few riders roll through and sit up and then that... Uh, now, now we've got a little break. Not very significant though, coming through the start finish line. I think it's Sam O'Shea who's riding on the front for Gibraltar, and that's one heck of a ride. He has sat on the front of that peloton, and only now does he get assistance from a rider from the Isle of Man. Uh, but he almost single-handedly kept the lid on that uh, on that breakaway, and they're going to get caught. They head up towards uh, Warwick Castle again, along to Jewelry Street, passing the castle once more. Uh, that attack has almost been shut down. You can see a little bit of a gap still to a clutch of riders, half a dozen riders who've gone off the front, but there's not much in it. Just a handful of seconds separating the breakaway from the front of the bunch. Here comes the break now with support there for the Welsh team. We've got a couple of riders off the front of the race, and here comes the peloton. Like you said, Ned, it's New Zealand that are under pressure there because they've missed that uh, breakaway. Bottle snatched from the side of the road. So many different nationalities here. Many more nationalities represented in this peloton uh, at the Commonwealth Games than there would be trade teams at a race like the Tour de France. So picking out your own particular soigneur, 37 different nationalities, uh, 22 different teams at the Tour de France, so finding your team helpers at the side of the road, that's a skill in itself. We can see it's pretty warm out there, riders already taking bottles from the side of the road and filling their pockets. Seeking out the shade as well on the left-hand side of the road where they can. Yeah. Jersey, Jack Robos and Dean Robson on the back there, one of the riders from South Africa. They were lucky to get some riders on the start line, weren't they, with such a uh, ferocious stomach bug going around the team? That's the half-timbered uh, facade of the old military hospital in the West Gate, in the heart of historic Warwick. One of the riders from Cyprus now pushing on. Top ten finish in the uh, women's race for Cyprus. For the sole competitor representing the island of Cyprus, but they've got two in this field. Anyway, the race is all together. As Paddy Bevin gets on the front now from New Zealand, the rider from the Israel uh, Premier Tech team, who took the overall victory at the Tour of Turkey with a brilliant individual display earlier on this year. Very interesting. It's one of those uh, riders, and there are many in the peloton, who've had to have corrective uh, heart surgery to correct, to correct a heart arrhythmia, and that set him back a couple of years ago, but he's fully recovered, uh, Paddy Bevin been able to uh, win races like the Tour of Turkey. He's got a lovely combination of, he's a very fast finisher, he's got a really good individual time trial, and he can climb. He's by far the best, uh, not the best from uh, in the, those disciplines in the world, a long way off being the best, but he's got such range that he can uh, offer, really offer something to a team in almost all situations and almost all race days.
was almost settling down to the extent that uh, half a conversation can be had there between uh, Charlie Aldridge and his teammate. Finn Crockett from Scotland. And it has calmed down a little bit at the front. And uh, Mark Cavendish shows himself towards the front. Yeah. Just uh, instructing Ben Swift that he wants his team over on the right-hand side of the road, just blocking things. And that way, Rochelle, he can keep... Swift and Cavendish can keep an eye on the whole of the front of the race. If they take one side of the road, they only have to look one way to see where the danger might lie. Yeah, they can see the attack uh, before they go and just get that kick. And they are really, really watching out for those moves. So, so far, the race has tried to dislodge Mark Cavendish. It hasn't managed to. Ben Swift just keeping the pace high to try and avoid attacks from going off the front. Mark Christian pushing on. One of the Namibian riders has uh, just had to abandon his race. That's John Paul Berger, who has uh, who was caught up in that original crash. So that's the end of the race for him. Well, this is, uh, I think, the third group on the road. They're nearly five minutes down at the moment. One of the Zambian riders in that group. Uh, one of the riders from Jersey. Uh, that is uh, Jack Heyman from Jersey, who's on the front there. 20, 20 riders, maybe a bit less, 15 riders, including two from Ghana as well. One of whom, I think, is Manny Arthur, who's uh, been dropped. They may only get one or two more laps in before they're called off the course. Once they're close to 10 minutes behind, they will be removed from the circuit. Well, that's uh, quite a sight, isn't it? The Isle of Man team setting the pace on the front. They've got themselves all over the front. They've uh, withheld all the shocks so far in the early phase of racing. They know there's a long, long way to go still. They have really taken this up from the start, Isle of Man. Um, Mike Cavendish obviously being in great form, happy to take this on and take responsibility of keeping the race together for a sprint. If Mark Cavendish gets into the right group, though, I wouldn't put it past him uh, to start working and pushing a group. Wales Joe Holt chasing across to a trio of riders, including one from Bahamas, one from Mauritius, and one from Canada at the front of the race. And New Zealand as well countering with Scotland too. Sean Flynn up the road from Scotland. And that's ignited everything a little bit uh, further back down the line. And Australia, as you can see, Luke Durbridge once again at it. England will want to get in this move as well, so expect to see a rush from the England jerseys and the Isle of Man. To try and control this. England have missed out here. But this group also is not going to go clear. Now they're well represented, but when Luke Durbridge from Australia made that move to try and go across, he actually pulled most of the peloton over with him. So you can see just behind all of men all very well placed together, just keeping control of the race at this point. But can they do it for another 123 kilometers? That's always a danger of a counter-attack, isn't it, um, Rochelle? If you're going to do it, sometimes you have to do it so explosively that you get a gap instantly. Otherwise, you will just drag riders across and shut down the move that you're trying to get into. Our move goes clear now, New Zealand and Scotland. Bevan and Flynn. Holt coming across. As soon as they kind of establish that break, they look over the shoulder, they don't like the makeup of the break, and they sit up directly. So it's all about a numbers game and a representation of which riders are in that breakaway. And it's taking a long time to establish a breakaway. Many of the same riders trying to force the pressure, though. Luke Rowe again pushing on with Ben Swift, former or current teammates uh, at the Ineos Grenadiers. They have known each other for so long, haven't they, Luke Rowe and Ben Swift? 
Oh, well, this is unfortunate for a rider from the Cayman Islands. This is Victor Magales. I spoke to him just before the start, asked him about the bandaging that he's got on his leg. He went down heavily in the individual time trial, and he's lost a lot of skin here. He's also got bandages on his uh, right arm, uh, so it's his left elbow, and that's all from the result of a crash in the individual time trial. And uh, lost a lot of skin the other day and wasn't confident even before the start today, the young rider from the Cayman Islands, that whether or not he'd be able to get through today. So that's unfortunate for uh, Magales, but he is out. And that leaves two, just two riders from the Cayman Islands. Meanwhile, at the front of the race, Lynn is uh, persisting with Paddy Bevin. But uh, that counter-attack of Ben Swift and Luke Rowe have got across. Red Walters once again... Uh, visibly there towards the front of the race from Grenada, and Mark Cavan is just monitoring things from around about 10th place. More riders, I think, are going to be pulled by the commissaires as they come across the line. They're too far down on the time. That's the rider from the Falkland Islands. Uh, that is Jim Walton uh, from the Falkland Islands. Uh, born and bred in Walsall, not too far from here, and uh, now lives in the Falkland Islands, but he is out of the race, along with uh, another rider from Ghana, and uh, three or four other riders more. So it's hard for them. But there's mutual respect from all these riders who have done what they could to stay in the race. Shake the hands and off for an early shower. Unfortunately, 120.7 kilometers to go for the front of the race. We'll see the same riders at the front of the race trying to make it hard. As we see the Englishman here, Ben Turner really put the pace down again. Aggressive racing. A little, a little gap starting to form there, but as we've seen so many times. Campbell Stewart is the rider from New Zealand with Red Walters of Grenada. Those three have got a little bit of a gap. Sean Flynn coming across with uh, Luke Durbridge and Ben Swift again. Luke Rowe trying to get across, bringing the rest of the race. They've got a bit of a gap on that uh, ride from Canada. God, it's hard. What a hard start. Very nearly an hour of racing we've had so far. And uh, it has not calmed down once. You see every time Ben Swift makes a move to close down a gap, he is looking over his shoulder, absolutely constantly looking for Mark Cavendish. Well, Ben Turner from England has been one of the revelations of 2022, his first full year with the Ineos Grenadiers. He's uh, reminding us exactly how he raced the Easter campaign and the Spring Classics campaign. He's brought the exact same skill set to the Commonwealth Games. As he, too, takes a wide angle, swings out extravagantly just to see what's happening in the bunch further down and where his teammates might be. Turner and Wright have been the two English riders really to attack repeatedly. Red Walters has had an absolutely outstanding start to this race and is looking so strong from Grenada. Three Welsh riders now. And another English rider moves to the front, and I think it's Fred Wright again, so he'll be the next one to attack. Calms down just a little bit. This time it's Connor Swift from England. So Arkea Samsic's Connor Swift is on the offensive. Cousin of Ben Swift, who's doing all the policing at the work, so he's making life really uncomfortable for his cousin at the moment. Paddy Bevan has latched onto that move with one of the riders from uh, Northern Ireland. Teggett, I think, is the rider from Northern Ireland. Mark Christian is the rider from the Isle of Man who's made that move. And uh, also in the move, Mark Christian from Scotland. Campbell Stewart, I think, or Jack Bauer from uh, Northern Ireland. Stevie Williams of Wales is in that group. Mark Christian of the Isle of Man. 
Bevin, though, driving it on, the Kiwi from New Zealand. It makes it very hard, doesn't it? They've got one rider in there from an Isle of Man, so they know that uh, they have a rider from the Isle of Man, they'll just sit on, won't do any work, so it's still very hard to establish a breakaway. Well, Mark Cavendish raced recently in Poland, in the Tour of Poland, effectively using that uh, stage race as a training camp for the Commonwealth Games. He had a relatively lightly raced, obviously hadn't raced since the British National Championships back in the end of June. He wanted, I think, just to regain a little bit of sharpness. Stepped off, stepped off um, the Tour of Poland a couple of days before he, uh, the race actually officially ended so that he could get himself up to uh, Warwick in time for this race in the right shape has really targeted this gold medal. Mark Cavendish is a former gold medalist at the Commonwealth Games, but that was a long, long time ago, and it came on the track in the scratch race. He won the scratch in Melbourne in 2006, and that is a, um, Rochelle, a sign of how long his career has been uh, unfolding. Yeah, I was there as well. And before that, four years before that, in Manchester, showing my age there. Uh, the pace has been so high from the start, so many attacks, yet nothing being able to stick. As we go back on board with Tom Mazzone from uh, the Isle of Man, towards the back in the company of a couple of riders from Jersey. I think this is actually uh, Mazzone's Mazzone's uh, onboard camera, rather than that of Corey Williams. You can see how fast it is. Even at the back now, it's full on stress. As we have a Geraint Thomas attacking off the front for Wales. New Zealand, Australia with Luke Plapp again, the reigning Australian national champion. His helmet slightly different from his teammates there. They're all wearing different helmets for the different trade teams that they represent, but he's got the uh, green and gold strike down his helmet just to uh, remind you that he is the reigning Australian national champion. Ben Turner's in this move, rider from uh, Bermuda, Ben Swift, rider from Mauritius, South Africa, Bermuda are in there, Canada. And 12 riders one way or another are out of the race, most of them having been eliminated uh, by the pace that's being set at the front. Well. It's G now on the front, Garrett Thomas, just trying to pick up the pace. And they just want to keep applying pressure and tiring the legs out of the riders so they can have attacks that actually stick and they can form a breakaway. Well, a little gap. Yeah, a little gap opens up. Mm -hmm. Who will do the chasing? You can see Mark Cavendish in around about seventh place there in the white helmet and the red kit. Just monitoring things. He is astute, tactically so astute. He knows exactly when to commit himself, and he seldom does it unless it's absolutely necessary. And normally, and normally he gets a real result from it as well. So he's a guy who knows how to conserve energy. That's been a big part of the story of the success of his career as well, is that Cavendish is so economical. So he's just sitting on the wheels at the back of the peloton now, seeing riders go off the front. And this breakaway is uh, becoming a little bit unwieldy. There will be too many riders here fairly soon, if there aren't already. Yeah, it doesn't feel like they're giving 100%. A little bit of hesitation, given the numbers in that breakaway. There's 11 riders at the front. But it's a good opportunity for a small breakaway to form from a breakaway. Yeah. Some strong riders here, though. Aaron Gates, Ben Turner, Luke Platt. Geraint Thomas. They're starting to put some pressure down now with all the riders contributing. The rider of the Isle of Man is there, which means Mark Cavendish's team in the chase will not be obligated to do all of the work. South Africa represented as well. 
Darren Impey with a teammate. So there is some very, very significant talent in this uh, big group off the front. But I think you're right, Rochelle, it's too big a group uh, to really establish itself. You'd well, imagine that uh, the stronger riders in that group would like to prize a group of some six or seven clear if they can. You can see a few riders trying to go across now, but this would be a perfect opportunity for some riders that have any extra power to just break away from this breakaway. The pace is very high in the breakaway at the moment. England with two riders, I think that was Fred Wright, was it? Uh, Sam Watson, interestingly, is counter-attacking and uh, taking with him... Another rider from the Isle of Man, so he won't want to do that. I think that's Matt Bostock, who's a dangerous uh, sprinter. So Ben Swift is in the front. And I don't know whether Sam Watson really should persist with that tactic of uh, bringing, bringing across potentially Matt Bostock, who was involved in that horrendous incident on the track the other day, uh, in which Matt Walls was catapulted over the uh, barriers. Oh, look at Red Walters. Having wow. another go. He has had, I mean, the, the peloton are let, letting him go, but he's having such an aggressive race. So whether, nice. whether they let him go or not, Rochelle, that's just really difficult to do, isn't it? Yeah. So, 15 riders at the front. Three counter-attacking. Stevie Williams from Wales, just bringing that little counter-attack back and shutting it down. But Sam Watson uh, takes Jack Bauer and Matt Bostock across to the front of the race. Yeah, not making much sense there. He's got two riders in the breakaway, strong riders at that. And he's lifting the uh, pace of the peloton whilst doing this uh, chase across. But the peloton have really uh, eased off at the moment. Not too much action happening from the peloton. Cypress have missed the break with uh, their two riders and they're working hard, but it's uh, well, it's a big group now. 15 riders, we understand, at the front of the race. 15, including two from Scotland. Finn Crockett and I think Sean Flynn. First real breakaway that we've seen at this point, they'll take a feed from the side of the road. So Jake Stewart might well be uh, one of the England riders, we understand. Scotland, uh, Sean Flynn and, and Finn Crockett, definitely, yeah. Morny uh, Van Nierkirk, one of the uh, South African riders, including Darrell Impey at the front of the race. Sam Culverwell uh, from the island of Guernsey is there. Yeah. And uh, this is the counter-attack. So this is, uh, this is Jack Bauer, Sam Watson, and I think Matt Bostock from the Isle of Man. Or Jake Stewart it is, actually, not Sam Watson. Jake Stewart is the local rider to uh, this area. Got an Australian coming across, an Australian at the front in Luke Clapp. So Jake Stewart is in a chasing group there with Matt Bostock of the Isle of Man. Garrett Thomas driving this uh, breakaway up. Sam... Uh, Ben Swift looking round to see what's coming up the road, and there are two groups of three trying to get across. So Ben Turner driving it on now in the company of Fred Wright. That's actually Wright who's working on the front at the moment. 15 riders at the front, and this is the chase group now. A, few, uh, a couple of little groups have got together. This is uh, chase group one. Jack Bauer, Jake Stewart in the white, and Red of England and Matt Bostock. One more rider from Scotland there. I think it might even be John Archibald. Miles Scottson as well, a part of that, part of this chase group. Jack Bauer looks around to see who is uh, prepared to work in this group. Actually, it's Mark Stewart from Scotland. And the Australian there is Miles Scottson in that group.
now. Like, how far behind are this group? Jack Bauer flicks his elbow. Uh, Jake Stewart comes through with Scotson on his wheel. These two are teammates uh, for Group Armour FTJ in France. They know each other extremely well, representing England and Australia. Mark Stewart on their wheel. Jack Bauer of Quick Step to Kerning. And uh, just sitting on the wheels there and not contributing is Matt Bostock from the Isle of Man. That is a pack. Hands out. Oh, that group is gone. I don't think that uh, chase group is going to get across. Well, they're finally working together for a breakaway now. It's got some really strong riders in there. Karen Thomas, very, very uh, aggressive. He wants to be in this uh, move. Well represented now. Two English riders, two Scottish riders. An Isle of Man rider. So the riders just have a look behind to see the break that they have established as we have Luke Plapp sitting on the back there. There is Luke Rowe from Wales, who's got uh, the man who finished third in the Tour de France in that front group. Geraint Thomas has made the breakaway, forced the breakaway in many senses. Brilliant ride from him. Stevie Williams, the teammate. Uh, sorry, that's a rider from the Isle of Man, I should say. Getting those kits muddled up all day. Uh, while the break's established now, it gives the riders in the peloton just a little bit of time to go back and talk to their team directors and at the same time just get a full uh, water bottle. Sam Brand, who is the rider in question, who rides uh, for Novo Nordisk. He's a rider, like all they are, the Novo Nordisk team, the trade team, who rides with type 1 diabetes. And Sam Brand, you should follow him on social media, it's very, very interesting and quite inspirational, actually, the way he manages uh, the condition. Red Walters, for the first time, is at the back of the bunch, failing ultimately to get in the move. Canada, uh, along with, uh, that's Mark Christian there, from the Isle of Man. Rwanda have missed the breakaway, so they're riding on the front. Well, it's probably fair to say at this point that uh, this group out in the front, there's plenty of riders contributing very, very well at the moment. Well, it's a tremendous opportunity for Team England here. They've got Sam Watson, Fred Wright and Ben Turner in this group. Fred Wright, the silver medalist in the individual time trial, ahead of Geraint Thomas, who was unfortunate. Geraint Thomas is in this breakaway group too. But this is a great result for England at the moment if this group stays away. This is the chase group. This is Jack Bauer, Miles Scotson, Mark Stewart, Jake Stewart, so representing England, and Matt Bostock, who is, uh, to coin a cycling phrase, he's sandbagging at the moment. He is uh, not riding or not contributing the rider from the Isle of Man. So the Mauritian rider, Alexandre Maya, we're just hearing on race radio, has been dropped from the leading group. So they've uh, just lost one of their riders at the front, but uh, realistically, how much firepower he was able to contribute, I'm not so sure. So Alexandre Maya has been dropped from the leading group. We're really pushing on now and developing a lead on the road. The pace has been very high in this breakaway. Plenty of people contributing, losing riders off the back of the breakaway as well. That's Finn Crockett on the front, the uh, from Scotland with the orange helmet. Fred Wright doing his turn on the front. Ben Turner will come through, the rider from Canada. Who you're looking at is uh, Pierre Andre Cote, who raced on the track for Canada. Ben Turner though moving on the front, moving through and taking his place on the front. Trying to think of big teams who've missed out here. 
Um, signi most significantly of all, it's New Zealand, isn't it? And that's why they've got Jack Bauer in the chase group, but if Jack Bauer doesn't get there, New Zealand are going to have to sit on the front of the, the peloton and try somehow and reel this one back. You're right there, Ned. New Zealand's the uh, big losers here, and they've got a pretty... Uh, they've got one rider in this breakaway. You can I see think... at the back. Oh, is, is it Paddy Bevin? I think it must be. Uh, the back of the bunch there, and there's a rider from New Zealand, that's Shane Archibald, a lead-out man formerly in years gone by of uh, Sam Bennett, Irish sprinter. And uh, Connor White, he's, uh, he's got a teammate up the road as well. So Mark Stewart battling on with... Uh, with Jack Bauer. We're starting to see a little bit of hesitation back here. Well, I'm not sure. I mean, we it's don't have chase. a time gap on the screen, but I'm not sure they're getting anywhere. That gap was huge, yeah. and they haven't quite got the firepower, and there's too much organisation at the front of the race now. Yeah, they're certainly not as organised here. You can see the Australian just missing turns there, leaving gaps. We have got a time gap now between the um, peloton and this group at the front, and it's 1 minute and 35 seconds. And well, of course, you're absolutely right, Michelle, uh, New Zealand do have a rider at the front of the race. It's not uh, Paddy Bevan, though, it's Aaron Gate, almost inevitably the triple gold medalist from the, uh, from the track. But how is the organisation bearing up at the moment at the front of this group? England definitely working. They're working with Scotland as well. They're contributing. Um, Geraint Thomas is definitely going through and doing his doing his uh, fair share of the work on the front. Geraint Thomas, the only Welshman in the front of the race. He certainly is doing a lot of work. He wanted to get in a breakaway with Fred Wright. He uh, made that pretty clear before the start of the race. He's established that. There's plenty of other riders there. Luke Plapp at the back, the Australian. Just watch out for him, see what his role is, see if he works his way up to the front and uh, continues to share the work. There certainly is a lot of big names. Well, let's see where all these groups are on the road then. This is the lead group of 15 riders. They're 1 minute and 39 seconds ahead of the peloton, but the key question is that chase group with uh, Mark Stewart and Jakey Stewart. Let's see how from far back are they the heli how Howell. far they are. I would imagine irretrievably far back, and uh, that's a lot of road for them to try and make up. Well, still not in sight, still not in sight, still not in sight. That is a big distance, and there are too many riders committed to the front of the race. There it is, that's the chase group, and they're probably only around about 45 seconds in front of the peloton. So they're, they're closer to the peloton than they are to the front of the race. Well, we might, might be seeing Mark Cavendish's race right away. In which case, it becomes all about Ben Swift, and he is a very fast finisher, so Ben Swift would represent the colours of the Isle of Man at the front of the race. Well, former, former British um, national champion for uh, two consecutive years, very nearly made it three consecutive years. Well, interestingly, it is New Zealand who are chasing, and we think Aaron Gates in that break, which would be a good person to have up in the break. As we now look at Geraint Thomas. Daryl Limpy's in there, Lucas Platt. Kim Crockett, the Canadian there as well, that's Andre Cook. So a really, really strong group of riders here. And uh, <laughs> it'd be a big call to say with over 100 kilometres to go that the winner might come from this group, but... Uh, I don't know how big a call it would be, to be honest. I think it's um, it may be so this may be the first selection. What's really interesting as well here, Rochelle, is that there are four riders representing different countries from one team here, the Ineos Grenadiers. Ben Turner, uh, Geraint Thomas, Ben Swift and Luke Clapp are all Ineos Grenadiers. Sam Culverwell there from... Uh, from the island of Guernsey. That's a fantastic performance for him to get himself in this in this selection. Yeah, he's done a great job. But it's England that have got the advantage with three riders. Sam Watson, Fred Wright Absolutely. and Ben Turner. What are they going to do with that? That's the big question. Well, they've got options, haven't they? There's Sam Turner. 
at the back there with the red, white and blue, the red and blue on the back of his helmet. He's only just been announced as um, being taken on as a World Tour professional by Group Arm FTJ by the big French team, having uh, served for six months as a stagiaire, as a trainee for them, the under-23 British National Road Race champion, Sam Watson. But you'd have thought uh, the fastest of the three, should a group come to the finish line, would be Fred Wright. Well, the peloton has nearly two minutes on the uh, main peloton. So we're looking at the lead peloton now. They have got two minutes on the main peloton. This is a situation back at the front of the bunch, and it is at the moment Rwanda who are still chasing. You can see those uh, red and white kits as well of England sitting on the wheels. So at the moment, it's down to Rwanda. Canada have got a rider at the front of the race, and therefore uh, they won't contribute to the chase. This chase group is uh, blowing apart under pressure now, as uh, three riders are getting away from the rest. They're not doing themselves any favours, are they, that chase group? If they could really get themselves together. Even then, though, uh, this, uh, the cooperation at the front of the race would have to fall apart, I think, for them to really have a chance. Finn Crockett. Well, there we go. To and Geraint Jeff Thomas. 107. So the gap is widening between uh, the front of the race and the chase group, which has splintered into uh, uh, a couple of different parts now. South Africa having a great ride, having two riders in that breakaway. So Daryl and Pete and his support rider there. Danny Kirk. Two Scottish riders, three English, two South Africans. A little bit of conversation going on there, but still working very, very well together. Will the winning move come from this breakaway group? Darrell Impey is a real danger, isn't he? Such a fast finish on him, Impey. Former yellow jersey in the Tour de France. Got a really sharp finish. Be pretty close to call if this group came to the line. Be a really tight call between the riders like Ben Swift, Fred Wright and Darrell Impey in a sprint. They're all very fast. You just wonder whether Fred Wright has got youth slightly on his side, whereas the other two have got so much experience on their side. And don't forget the Kiwi rider here. Yeah, ben Turner is infuriated by his teammates, his trade teammate there, Luke Clapp, is encouraging him to come through, because it is evident that Luke Clapp is not doing very much work on the, on the front, if it any. Is, it is indeed, and I think that just is a, a tactic that they may have been told by the manager, given that they've only got four riders. They lost two riders in uh, Caleb Ewan and Rowan Dennis. Yeah, but equally, England have got three riders in this breakaway, so, I mean, it's it's annoying, but it is quite legitimate of Luke Clapp to say, it's over to you, you've got all the, all, the, all the cards in your deck. Absolutely, one of the riders in Luke Clapp only having himself in the breakaway is a good reason to not do too much work. So this is the Jack Bauer group uh, with Miles Stockson, who's on the front. From Australian. This is the second group on the road. Last time we had a time gap, they were one minute and seven seconds down, and they were going nowhere. Matt Bostock is in that group. There he is, the rider from the Isle of Man, looking round. But also a legitimate reason for Luke Platt not to be doing work in the front of the group because he's got a teammate trying to come across, and Miles Scottson. And they're catching two of the riders there who have been dropped from the original breakaway. So those riders ahead of them. Well, oh, actually, is that that's Bauer's gone off. Yeah, this is still uh, the group of the chasers. It is, you're right, yeah. Just a little bit of a break um, while riders are talking to each other about who should be doing the work. In fact, they all need to be working really well together if they want to get across to that front group. I think what's happened here is that um, Jack Bauer has picked up the Mauritian rider, possibly, who dropped away from the original breakaway. They seem to, oh, there he is, yes. Uh, that's Alexander Meyer who's in the original breakaway, he's dropped back, so uh, that's why there's more riders in this group. Mark Stewart and Jack Barrett at the front, they're looking the freshest. Then two riders from the same team, uh, because you can see by the same helmets there, that's Jake Stewart from England, and in front of him, Miles Scottson of Australia. Not giving up. Here's Matt Bostock, whose crash, uh, not that he could do anything about it on the track, and you can see he's still carrying the wounds from that crash. Um, precipitated the horrendous crash on the track the other day that ultimately saw Matt Walls flying into the stands. 
But mercifully, Matt Walls is absolutely all right after receiving a couple of stitches and he's got some cuts and bruises. And Matt Bostock uh, as well, miraculously, is OK and can take his place in the road race. He's riding for the Isle of Man. And here we are back at the front of the race where Ben Turner is agitated. Yeah, and he shouldn't he shouldn't really be, should he? He's got two teammates here, three three riders from England. That's the lead group just passing through there. With Matt Teggett of Northern Ireland. Coming through now, Sean Flynn, Sean Flynn of Scotland. Aaron Gate, the man of the velodrome in the colours of New Zealand, and Luke Plapp, who's now... And Ben Turner, whatever he said to Luke Plapp has had an effect, because Plapp is now riding on the front. Yeah, and here comes Turner, his policeman. Looks like he's in a little bit of uh, hurt. He might come good later in the race. Here's Daryl Impey, the veteran rider from South Africa, lives in Girona in northern Spain, like so many of these riders do. Catalonia, as they're about to come past the start-finish line, and when they'll head out, they'll be going out with six laps remaining. So one more lap to go, and it'll be the halfway point in the road race. So now we get a timed gap to see exactly uh, where the next group on the road is, with Mark Stewart, Jack Bauer, etc. This is the second group. Clock ticking over now, 20 seconds down. Mark Stewart just looking over his shoulder at uh, Jack Bauer. Pushing on the front there. And he's got Miles Scottson on his wheel. Well, have they brought a bit of time back? Let's just have a look. The last time uh, gap we had was 107. It looks as though they might have dragged a little bit of time back, but it's still a big gap that they've got. Did they look up at the scoreboard? And this is a third group on the road containing a. Uh, a quartet of riders, one from Northern Ireland, uh, one from Scotland, that's Charlie Aldridge, uh, who competed in the mountain bike cross-country race in conversation with the rider from Northern Ireland. Well, they've got a big job to do, haven't they, if they want to bridge across to those chasers or to the league group. Just the four of them as well, at a big disadvantage. Just looking around the rider from Cyprus there to check uh, what is coming up behind them, how far off the front of the bunch they are. Well, that breakaway certainly has a big time advantage over the main peloton. And here comes the peloton. Still with three riders from Rwanda setting the pace on the front. It's very difficult to see which other team will work with Rwanda here. They've missed the breakaway, they've been sent up to the front to work. I don't think they're going to get any help from any other team, Rwanda. So they're really in the hurt now, and uh, they've only got three riders to use here, and the gap is growing now, right out to two minutes and 23 seconds. And somewhere in this pack will be Mark Cavendish, feeling rather rueful, I would imagine, and the way things have uh, panned out. But he does have a teammate up the road in Ben Swift. There is Cavendish. Well, that lead group's got 50 seconds over the chasers. Mark Cavendish not looking too happy about this situation. There he is, just going around the corner. He does have a teammate in the front group, but... He's got a teammate in the chase group as well, in Matt Bostock, who's very fast. I mean, it, yeah, if Matt, for the Isle of Man's perspective, they could really do with Bostock getting across to the front of the race. A combination of Swift and Bostock in that kind of company would be genuinely race-threatening, I think. Ben Swift could, could still win a sprint from this group, could easily win a uh, sprint from this select group. But in tandem with Matt Bostock, that really would be a threat. Well, I was going to say before, Aaron Gates pretty fast at the finish as well. So there's quite a few fast riders in this group. But I think we're going to see an explosion from this front group. Yeah, there's too many riders who won't want it to come down to a sprint. I think of Geraint Thomas, for example. 
And I'm sure England, with their numerical supremacy, that Sam Watson, don't forget, Ben Turner and Fred Wright, they can afford eventually to uh, attack long range with one or two of their riders. I'd so imagine getting... Ben Turner or Sam Watson would be the first to attack. Getting a little bit tired, the chase group behind. They're losing a little bit more time to this front group. 55 seconds behind now. And I'm sure this group out in front are not that keen to let the chase group catch them, so they're still working very well together. The other rider in that uh, quartet of riders who came over the line together, just to, uh, just to name check them, Chris McGlinchey of Northern Ireland, Charlie Aldridge of Scotland, Hassani Hennis of uh, Anguilla, and Andreas Miltiadis of Cyprus. Well, riders now just going back to their team cars to get some water and uh, talk to the directors about what they'd like them to do. But at the moment, it's just equal turns for everybody, keeping the pace high. So Well, we're just hearing on race radio, 55 seconds separates the front group from the second group on the road. So I think when they came over the start finish line last time, they were around about 46 seconds down. So the time gap is growing again. Yeah, I think it might start to get exciting for these riders in the breakaway because uh, if they keep working like this for another couple of laps, then they're all in a chance in with a chance for a medal. Well, I mean, Rwanda can't sit on the peloton, on the front of the peloton, unaided for very much longer, I wouldn't imagine. No, they've the done, only, the they've already done an entire lap from, on the front. And here is the chase group, 55 seconds down. Miles Scotson. Alexander Mayer from Mauritius, Jack Bauer. Mark Stewart, Jake Stewart, and Matt Bostock, who has uh, not contributed to the chase one bit. Hot out on the road, getting very hot here at the finishing line as well. Yeah, they just don't look like they're 100% committed to getting across to that break. Only having six riders, they're going to tire a lot quicker than uh, those 15 riders out in front as well. So not looking too good for this chase group. It's a very fast pace. Nearly 70 kilometres raced and only 90 kilometres to go. The race could be over in around about uh, two hours, just over two hours of racing, and that might be it. Scottson in this group just calling for the car to come. They'll have hopefully two cars because they'll want a lead car behind Lucas Platt who's in the lead group and Miles Scottson in the second chase group a minute behind. He's requesting water from the team car. back at the, uh, the front of the peloton just to see who's working and there we go when they came through the start finish line there were three riders from Rwanda working on the front they had Mugisha Manizabio and Mugisha um, Moise Mugisha one of the two brothers and now they've just got one left and uh, at the point where he can do no more this rider from Rwanda effectively that is game over for Mark Cavendish and the rest of the peloton because uh, there's no other team who's going to want to ride in their place that's right, and this main main group here are two minutes 40 behind the lead group. So once Rwanda have finished. Oh, this is really, uh, we're getting some news actually over the race radio that is 
Bit of a dangerous situation for Lucas Platt in trouble and the team car going back to Miles Scottson in the second group. So let's see how that plays out. At the moment, we're with the main peloton. They're at a 2 minutes 40, 2 minutes 59 now, yep. down on the main, uh, the front group of 15 riders. So there we go. Mission impossible at the moment for Team Rwanda. And unless another team emerges from the pack just to really take it up, the peloton cannot get back at this rate. Well, unfortunate for Mark Cavendish, who's back in that main peloton. Two minutes and 55 seconds. He can't even do anything by himself. He couldn't possibly chase over that grip. So here's, here's what this is. Yeah, what happened here? Luke Plapp looking around, calling for assistance from his team car. Yeah, he wanted to assistance from the team car, but I think he's been told by the commissaires that the team car is not available at the moment because it's behind chase number two, servicing Miles Scottson. And here we go back through to live pictures and Geraint Thomas as well as Luke Plapp dropping off now. Just wanting to go back to their team cars, not in any any means getting dropped from the peloton, but just looking for support from the team car. This is going to take some of the speed of this group away, though. It will definitely just change the dynamic of uh, what's going on. You can visibly see how uh, much easier they're riding. A conversation between the two trade teammates, Ben Swift and Geraint Thomas, at the front of this race. Well, Lucas Platt is behind our cameraman now, so we're not sure if he's getting serviced or if he has a, a problem, a mechanical problem. At the moment, it's uh, mostly the England team who are driving this on at the front. Always a, a white jersey with those red shorts close to the front and working. And this is uh, the situation further back. Chase Group 1. This is Miles Scottson, Luke Plapp's teammate. Jack Bauer looks round as if to say, was that all? <laughs> is that all you got on that turn? Just questioning uh, how much Scottson did on the front there. Scottson doesn't look too good there. He's just letting a little gap open up which he closes again, and he's got his teammate Jake Stewart on his wheel the whole time. I say his teammate, they just they both ride for Group Palmer FTJ. Well, there, there we go, there's Miles Scottson getting assistance from his team car. He's in chase number two with those riders on your screen. But we have an interesting situation well, at the front. The, the Australian team cars now move past that group and into the, into the gap now, so Luke Clapp at the front of the race is about to get the assistance that he required. That's, there you are, there's the Australian team car vanishing over the brow of the hill, and he's heading up towards where Luke Plapp has just dropped off. Well, if Luke, Lucas Plapp had a mechanical problem in that front group, it would have been too long to wait for that car, so unfortunately, we'll have to wait and see back in the front group if Lucas Plapp is still in there, or if he's had a mechanical without the team car behind. That would have been a tragic mistake from the Australian team car. And one of the big uh, problems, I guess, having riders in the front group and the second group and the third group and one car to service the riders. So one minute gap between the leaders and the chase group one. Two yeah. South African riders, two Scottish riders, three riders from England. Northern Ireland represented. So too is the island of uh, Guernsey with Sam Culverwell, the talented under 23 rider from the Trinity Racing Academy effectively, the Trinity Racing team, Ben Swift. Geraint Thomas has dropped back to his team car. Luke Plapp has dropped back to his team car. There is Sam Culverwell. A real prospect, actually, the island of Guernsey, represented at the front of this race. Well, it would be disaster for Australia if Lucas Plapp has had a mechanical. Hopefully he's just hanging back with Garen Thomas waiting for a bottle from his team car. Well, this could hardly have worked out better. At this point in the race, admit there's a long way to go, 87 kilometres remaining, but this could hardly have worked out better for Team England at the moment. Yeah, they're definitely the team that are pushing this along as well, making sure that the pace stays as high as possible. The first task was to make sure that Mark Cavendish is out of the race and effectively we're on the point of uh, reaching that point where there'd be no way back for Mark Cavendish. As Garrett Thomas, having dropped back to his team car now, gets back into the, uh, the group at the front of the race. 86.7 kilometres to go. Garrett Thomas safely back into that group after refreshing and going back to the team car to talk to his director. He'll be uh, having some discussions about what to do next. Here comes Lucas, Pla Lucas Plapp trying to make his way back to that lead group. So, so safely done so. Plapp with some rather ragged looking race numbers on his back. Now it gets back on. Sam Culverwell in the meantime from Guernsey, Team Guernsey has dropped back. 
He's the next rider from the front of the race to require a bit of assistance. I'll tell you what, Rochelle, the conversations between Ben Swift and Geraint Thomas keep happening. These two riders, these two friends, these two colleagues who go back well over a decade together. And I wonder what tactics they are uh, discussing, because in a way, they are not just opponents in the sense that one's riding for the Isle of Man and the other is riding for, um, for Wales. They are, because they're very different riders, they would have completely different tactics in mind as well. Well, I think Garen Thomas is having a chat with everyone here, or everyone's having a chat with him one way or the other. Garen Thomas is the only rider in that breakaway from Wales. He really wants to win this race. He had a disappointing time trial, unfortunately had a crash. And I think Lucas Platt was going back to talk to the director about whether he should do work in this group or not, because he also has high hopes after uh, the victory of his girlfriend, Georgia Baker, in the women's road race, who's actually won three gold medals here at the Commonwealth Games. So morale's high between Lucas Platt and Georgia Baker. They've had a very successful uh, time here at the Commonwealth Games. So it'll be interesting to see what tactic he plays. And Geraint Thomas just drifting his way through the group there, talking to all of the riders and seeing who wants to do what from this breakaway. Still 85 kilometers to go. But we are pretty confident that the winner of the race will come from this breakaway. Swift just drifting around with the wheels at the back. Well, also the only rider there from the Isle of Man. I mean, the middle part of the race here, Rochelle, they've just got to keep the unity together for a little while yet, haven't they? For the next hour of racing or so, they have to ensure that this, that nothing untoward happens in this group. They just have to keep sharing the work. Obviously, England will be doing the lion's share, but everyone else has to play their part. Yeah, I think it would be a big mistake if riders started to attack now and uh, upset the rhythm of this uh, breakaway because they're not really in the clear yet, are they? They still need to establish exactly. a, yep. bigger, a bigger break from this chase number two. Although there is always that, it's, just, it's finely balanced at the moment. It's that delicate situation where you do get some slightly contradictory things going on in the road because you get Aaron Gate, who's riding, contributing, playing his part at the front of the race, the New Zealander. But on, on, on the other hand, a minute down the road, you've got uh, you've got um, Jack Bauer doing a considerable amount of the work to get across to a group which is being driven on by his teammate. So occasionally the two tactics do conflict. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, maybe New Zealand would be comfortable with another rider in that breakaway, but uh, not taking another Englishman across, that would be uh, not a great move. And uh, an Englishman in Jake Stewart with a vicious sprint on him as well, a, a rider capable of winning a full-on bunch sprint, as he's proved with his uh, first couple of years with the Palmer FDJ. He's probably, of all the riders at the front, maybe the fastest Jake Stewart, if he gets to the front. It was very interesting. Uh, I had to double check uh, and uh, question whether these riders had race radios back to their cars before the start because we saw Scotland chasing on the front when John Archibald was off the back, which was very, very strange. And there has been some things happen in this race that just don't make sense. Um, and that's bike racing. They do have race radio communication, but uh, as we see in the second chase group, we have a New Zealander chasing with an Englishman on the wheel when there's already three riders from England in that lead group. I don't think what New Zealand are doing is, is full-on contradictory, though, is it, Rochelle? They're just playing it, uh, you know, they're trying to keep two irons in the fire, and Aaron Gate needs to be part of that breakaway, needs to play his part, but if it comes back, he's absolutely fine with the notion of Jack Bauer being in that group as well. Yeah, absolutely. They can't afford to just uh, sit up and rest and uh, put all their uh, eggs into one basket with Aaron Gate being in the break with so many riders, 15 riders in that front group. Well, there he is, Aaron Gates. Now, let's see what he does now, because uh, what are New Zealand's tactics? There's just an indication that the uh, time gap might be coming down a little bit. And the only reason for that would be, because there's nothing changing in the uh, chase group, the only reason for that would be that some of the harmony is beginning to ebb out of this group. There's a lot of riders going back to the team car, and it does disrupt the uh, speed on the front. There is Ben Swift, the rider from the Isle of Man. That group goes to the line. Ben Swift will be one of a handful of favourites to win a, a very, very reduced sprint. And there is his uh, team leader, Mark Cavendish, back in the peloton. A peloton uh, which is, last time we saw, pretty much grinding to a halt. Yeah, close to three minutes behind the uh, lead group. Two minutes 34 behind the lead group. A 
just have a look at the front of the peloton. And as you can see, we predicted it, we saw it coming. Rwanda are spent, that's it. And so Wales and Canada and England are just riding a very, very gentle tempo. And there are no teams left to chase. So the two groups at the front of the race might come together, but the winner will not come from this peloton. That much has been decided now. Well, it's a last, a last chance here to try and animate this race and get clear of the peloton as a rider attacks. Just checking, is it a rider from Gibraltar? I think it might be one of the Gibraltar riders trying to get up the road and attacking, but it's a big ask. Well, it's, it's Mark Lett, the husband of Olivia uh, Lett, who competed very admirably in uh, the women's road race. A hard ask, isn't it, from being uh, two minutes 40 down. But on the other hand, they might as well do it. You know, what's the point of being in the race if you're just going to roll in? Yeah, they want to have the best race possible. Use it as a training day as well. A bit of an experience. Anything can happen with 80 kilometres still to race. So he's been joined by... One of the England riders, I think. Yeah, they are, they are riding an absolutely superb race, aren't they? Yeah. It's Connor Swift, I think, who is uh, pretty sure that's Connor Swift and Mark Lett. And they can't do much more than they have done to this point team of England have done a very, very good job. Yeah, it is Connor Swift. It's um, uh, it's a perfect tactic from both of these riders. Mark Lett noticed that the peloton had effectively given up, and just a counter-attack and took with him uh, Connor Swift. Meanwhile, at the start-finish line, we're about to watch them uh, come to the line, and when they do, that'll be the precise halfway point of the race, and they'll have five laps left. Darrell Impey. I'm characteristically riding without shades, Darren Impey. It's looking good. Illness prevented him from racing the individual time trial. He likes a hard race, Darren Impey, so he won't be scared of doing hard turns on the front, keeping that pace nice and high. Ben Turner. Ben Turner responsible for establishing this breakaway. He was in every move from the gun. So Kyle well from Guernsey, just 21 years of age. A conversation between the two Scots a bit further down. Finn Crockett and Sean Flynn. And Luke Plapp, whatever discussions he may or may not have had with the team management in the car, uh, Luke Plapp is committing to ride on the front now. Certainly is. As you can see, Luke Plapp there is wearing aero shoe covers, and I think he might be the only rider out of the 150-odd riders that started this race. It's very hot out there, but uh, it indicates he might be going for a solo breakaway at some point throughout this race. He's got gold glasses on there. So the halfway point has been passed. And here comes the Chase Quick one. Now, what sort of deficit will they have now? Mark Stewart, Jack Bauer, Miles Scottson, Matt Bostock, who isn't riding, Alexander Meyer of Mauritius, who is just eating at the back there, who's in the original breakaway and dropped back and found himself in this group and now is contributing to this group. 48 seconds. It was around about one minute and six seconds down last time we had a, a decent time check. And I think they might have clawed back a second or two, but not much more than that. As they come to the line and they've got, well, it's not even that, is it? No big difference in the time gap as Miles Scottson brings them over the line. One minute and seven seconds down on the front of the race. But this first chasing group do have it together a little bit more than they did at the start, don't they? Just start uh, doing consistent turns, everyone contributing. Well, not, not all, not all. Um, Matt Bostock hasn't been contributing yet from the Isle of Man, but he's not at the back of that group as he has been. And I wonder whether we see Matt, we might see Mark, Matt Bostock doing a bit of work in this group. Yeah, he has the right to not do any work. He's got a, obviously, very fast rider out in front of Ben Swift and a very fast rider behind him in Mark Cavendish. This is the, uh, the chase group. About, well, we know exactly how far down there. One minute and seven seconds down. seconds I think they can say that's the oh. end of the day for any chance of getting into a medal winning position 
So this is uh, Chase Group 2. It contains Hassani Hennis of Anguilla, Andreas Miltiadis of Cyprus, Charlie Aldridge of Scotland, and Chris McGlinchey of Northern Ireland. And they are around about 2 minutes and 45 seconds down on the front of the race. So um, 1 minute and 40 seconds down on the Chase Group 2 ahead of them on the road, and they're making no impact on the front of the race. So they are effectively um, falling away from the front of the race, and there's no way back for this group either. Charlie Aldridge, the rider on the front, was so unfortunate in the mountain bike cross-country competition. He uh, crashed on the grassy finishing circuit, and when he was in the bronze medal position all on his own, and ripped off his uh, rear derailleur and never recovered from that mechanical. Just super unfortunate in that mountain bike race because it was uh, uh, what we call kind of a soft crash. He just slid out on a uh, grass corner, but unfortunately on the side of the rear derailleur they just snapped off in mountain biking. There's no spare vehicle behind you, so the end of his bronze medal ride, unfortunately. And back of the main peloton here, who will very soon call it a day. Well, another team is having a go, but there's only one rider on that team, and it is uh, the Mark... Uh, well, one rider working on the front has got other teammates, and it is Team Gibraltar who are riding on the front. And look at England, they haven't switched off yet. They are doing an absolutely sensational ride. So Gibraltar head the peloton over the start-finish line with 77.4 kilometres to go for the leaders, who are almost four minutes up the road. Yeah, it seems like a very long time ago when we saw the leaders go through. <laughs> so really not a bad tactic uh, from uh, Isle of Man, with Mark Cavendish uh, being the favourite, but getting a very fast man in the breakaway in Ben Swift. Well, I think that was the minimum requirement for them. If it wasn't going to be Mark Cavendish up the road, it had to be Ben Swift. And if it wasn't going to be one of those two, it had to be Matt Bostock. So they've got at least the riders, one of the riders they would have wanted in the move of the day. And with the benefit of hindsight, I think a break was always going to go clear in this group at some point. We certainly saw a very fast and aggressive uh, first couple of laps, didn't we, where everything, attacks just went one after the other. Many times the same riders up the front trying to establish a break. Well, this is the uh, lead group that we're looking at now, of 15 riders, containing Daryl Impey from England. You've got Ben Turner, Fred Wright and Sam Watson all in there. Race Radio telling us that the time gap is pretty constant between groups one and two. One minute and five seconds, so they're certainly not losing time, but equally they're not gaining time at the moment. Sounds obvious, but they are locked in in the race in terms of the race situation at the moment and matching each other for pace, the first and the second group on the road. Geraint Thomas there as well. We'll be planning a big move at some point. And Swift. And another attack going off the front of the peloton, which is uh, almost conceded. And always very heavily marked by England. Yeah, it's again Connor Swift is going with this uh, counter-attack from Northern Ireland, Guernsey. Stevie Williams as well, also marking that move from Wales. But this uh, front end of the race is cooperating very smoothly now. They've got all their little minor disagreements and difficulties sorted out. And they are just maintaining a, a sustainable and solid pace that's holding them at just over a minute above the uh, in front of the uh, second chase group. They look like they're turning over quite comfortably, just uh, maintaining that gap at the moment. Missing turns now, sitting at the back. And Swift of Isle of Man just slipping off the back there. 
whether you're skipping turns or going back to the director in the race car. Well, the second chasing group out on the road have not been successful. They are getting caught, we are hearing on race radio, by the main at Peloton. Well, they were losing ground very fast, weren't they? There was that, that group with Hassani Hennis, Andreas Militadis, uh, Charlie Aldridge and Chris McGlinchey of Northern Ireland. Uh, they weren't too far in front of the peloton when they came through the uh, start-finish line last time, and now it appears they have been called. Caden Hopkins is a rider we should mention in the front of the race. Produced a really, really good individual time trial and is clearly the strongest of the riders from Bermuda. He's gone unnoticed and uncommented on. There he is, two or not quite. There he is in the uh, purple, right at the back of that group. But uh, he's in great form, Caden Hopkins. Yeah, he's done really well to uh, get into this breakaway and to be pulling turns if he rolls through. And you can see Ben Swift just missing turns again at the back there. So it's Matthew Tegart there just uh, asking all the riders to contribute. There he is, the national champion in the individual time trial two years ago of Bermuda. He's only 22 years of age. Just outside the top 10 he was in the individual time trial, finished in 11th place. But it was a notable time trial. Well, very interesting to see in that front group, Ben Swift just sitting at the back of the Isle of Man. That might upset the uh, pace at the front. Yeah, Ben Swift is sitting on a little bit here, Rochelle. Yeah, and they're, they're losing their, uh, they're losing a little bit of time to that first chasing group. Not much. They're still uh, the chasing group's still just about a minute and five seconds behind. But if they don't put too much pressure on here at the front, we might see that first chasing group actually make contact but uh, I think it'll only be another lap or two before these riders start to actually start attacking each other. So here is the uh, constitution of this front group of 15 riders, Sam Watson of England and Kupama FDJ, Caden Hopkins of Bermuda, an excellent race, race for him, Ben Swift who's starting to play games a little bit, Sam Culverworth, Luke Platt amongst the 15 riders at the front. Cots yeah, as well yeah, Canada. Cots is in there for Canada. So it took a long time to establish, didn't it? But when you get the right makeup of riders, a few riders might be nervous that there's three riders from England in there, but they have done a lot of work, especially Ben Turner. Sam Watson, I think, has done the, the, the least of the work of the England riders so far. He's a really talented rider. Here's the, some of the remaining riders. Ben Swift, we noticed. Um, Starting to sit on the back there and take his little rest. Uh, whether the, the rest of the group will be happy with that once they realise that he's not come through for a turn for the last 10 minutes. They may start to have some words. So Matt Taggart. But, uh, two Two riders at the, uh, uh, the front in, uh, in the colours of South Africa, those quite distinctive colours of South Africa. Morni van Niekerk has got a real job to do here for uh, Daryl Impey. The more I think about it, the more I think of Daryl Impey's in, a, in with a real shout of uh, medal or if not victory here from this group. Question is for Geraint Thomas. How does he set about trying to win this race? And that is a bit of a conundrum, isn't it, Rochelle? Yeah, well, as we saw before, he was having, having a chat to a few riders. There's, there might be just a couple of riders that he'd like to take away uh, with him in a breakaway and then see what he can do from there. But uh, The real problem he has got, isn't it, is Team England. Because if he, if he goes off in a group or even solos, then Team England have got two riders that they can dispense of just chase him down because they've got the strength and depth. All we can hope for is that Team England have done a little bit too much work, or the majority of the work, and uh, obviously coming off the Tour de France, 
Garrett Thomas will have really good form. Well, we saw in the time trial he was equal second when he had his crash. He was not really in the mix for the gold medal with Rowan Dennis, but uh, he was certainly up there challenging Fred Wright for the silver medal. So he'll be determined today, that's, that's for sure. He's Sam Watson just wanting to get a drink from the team car. Yep, on race radio, as you can see in glance of back, the team car has been called forward to the back of this group so that Sam Watson can get himself a bottle or some other kind of assistance. Yeah, so when they put the bottle up in the air with the right hand, that means that they'd like to have their director's car come up and talk to them, get some fresh bottles. Empty bottle. So one minute and 30 seconds we're hearing is now the time gap. So they're extending their advantage over the chase on the road. You can see they're having a uh, big discussion. We've got three riders here. What do we do? How do we use this to our advantage? Matt Bramier, the former Irish uh, racer in the England team car there. Conversation with Sam Watson. Really had a breakthrough year, Sam Watson, under 23 national champion. He was in that group of riders who came to the finish line in the British National Championships with Mark Cavendish and he was beaten, I think, into third place on that occasion in the sprint. But it was a very, very impressive ride from Sam Watson and he was the youngest rider in that group and took the under-23 national championship. Discussing lengthily tactics with Matt Bramier. Yeah, absolutely. The lap's only 16 kilometres, so it's um, very easily possible for the riders to get around a lap uh, with two bottles and refresh at the feed zone. But if they do put their hand up to uh, have the team car come up, it's most likely that they want to have a chat to the director. And whilst they're doing that, they take some fresh bottles as well. Geraint Thomas just keeping the pace high at the front. There's Daryl Olympia from South Africa comes through. As Ned pointed out, very strange he's not wearing sunglasses. It's just the most unlike him, isn't it? I can't remember him ever, see, ever seeing him racing without a visor before, without glasses before. Yep. So 15 riders at the front of the race. Still all the cards with England, and uh, those discussions have been concluded, I think, between Matt Bramier and Sam Watson in the England team car. Uh, the kilometres are ticking down, 69 kilometres to go. Ben Turner really keeping the pace high from England, the young uh, Yorkshireman. Again, he's a product of the cyclocross circuit. He switched his attention this year to racing on the road, and guess what? Turns out he's brilliant. We're seeing it over and over again that cyclocross just turns out, turns out uh, champion riders. Ben Turner has yet to win anything substantial, but his role, uh, especially in the uh, Belgian cobbled classics, was so exciting and such full of potential and because he was so disruptive as a racer he allowed his teammates uh, to take their opportunities and win races instead just getting nice shots here of the uh, 15 leaders and you can see england is doing the majority of the work there's a lot of riders skipping turns now which is going to upset the uh, speed of this group a lot of riders looking behind Covers from crashes as well. He's a hard man in every sense, and he's very, very savvy. A lot of experience behind him. For many, many years, he was with the Orica Bike Edge team. And races, races for Israel Trinity. And they're just rolling through there. Right, Sam Watson in conversation there. Sam Watson just uh, relaying what he's uh, just been communicated to by S uh, Matt Bramier in the car, and they'll be discussing tactics, no doubt. We're just starting to be able to vaguely read the body language of the riders that are feeling a little bit fatigued, but that can change too with uh, over 60, 65 kilometres to go. 
a lot can change if uh, they're feeling a bit low on energy and they top up. So this is the chase group. We haven't seen them for a while, but they are on the last time gap we had. They're around about 1 minute 30 seconds down, if not more. And uh, Matt Bostock, uh, Alexandra Meyer of Mauritius, Miles Scott, 1 minute and 33 seconds down last time we had a timing. So they have lost time on the front of the race. No sign of the uh, group at the front, losing any of their cohesion or purpose. Jake Stewart, Mark Stewart from Scotland, combining a track racing program with the road. Jack Bauer of New Zealand, fresh from the Tour de France, and uh, on the front, Miles Scotson. But you can tell just by looking at their body language that they don't believe this is possible anymore. Yeah, it's a big ask, uh, six riders versus 15 out in front and 15 very big names and strong riders. of Mauritius having a good ride there. You see the gaps being left. And riders slipping in. So not everyone doing a fair share of turns at the moment. It's a not good opportunistic ride from Antoine Meyer, but he's strong and he's holding his own in this group at the moment. Was dropped from that first group, but uh, maybe that says something about the group that this, uh, the pace that this group is riding at as well. That he's able to live with this, this group as the race settles down into a pretty constant pattern at the moment. Before the fireworks really begin in this uh, front group, because uh, they certainly will. It's just a question of when. Caden Hopkins puts his arm in the air from Bermuda. Then swiftly out of them. Sam Culwell, Culwell of Guernsey. Luke Platt. Pierre Andre Coates, Aaron Gates of New Zealand, Fred Wright and Ben Turner, and Sam Watson, three English riders in that front row. Two from Scotland as well. Still working well together. With 65 kilometers to go. England continuing to drive this group on. Yes, and we've just heard up over the race radio that they are maintaining their lead over the first chase group of 1 minute 30. So both this lead group and the first chase group are riding at a uh, very equal pace at the moment. Very casual, established that uh, time gap. You can see the follow cars coming up one by one to service their riders. 15 riders in this lead group. So Aaron Gate, we've seen Geraint Thomas, Finn Crockett, Sean Flynn, Matthew Teggart of Northern Ireland, and two from South Africa, Dara Limpy and, uh, and Morni Van Nico. Great ride from Sam Cobblewell to be in that uh, lead group as well. End of lap six, and there are four laps to go the next time they come over the start finish line. Here they come. Teggett driving them on from Northern Ireland. Aaron Gates, the triple gold medalist from the velodrome, sitting on the front. And even Ben Swift has uh, moved himself closer to the front of the bunch and has just gone through and done a turn after almost an entire circuit where he didn't really contribute and he was just conserving a little bit of energy, playing a very wily game. Crockett on the wheel of the man from Northern Ireland. Then uh, comes Fred Wright and Dara Limpy. Caden Hopkins uh, uh, from Bermuda has put his arm in the air and he wants his team car to come up to offer him support at the, uh, at the back of the front group. So, Wright and Turner to the applause of the home crowd here in England. Uh, take the race over the start finish line and they've got four laps remaining 63.9 kilometers to go <laughs> 
Nick Platt having initially started off in this breakaway group, not really contributing, is definitely a, a proper and uh, fully committed constituent part of this move now and uh, is sharing the work. And in fact, every rider is, including Ben Swift. Garrett Thomas also has been a willing part of this move. Once yep. again, another word exchange between Garrett Thomas and Ben Swift. Such an interesting rider, Ben Swift, Rochelle. The feeling is that he will go on eventually to become a first-class director sportif because he's got great tactical awareness and uh, huge amounts of experience as well. Yeah, and great to have a team leader in a team that uh, can read a bike race really well. You can stay on the bike as long as possible and be a team leader. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's another aspect of him. He's very, very solid, isn't he? Doesn't really succumb to it. Doesn't crash very often. Doesn't succumb to illness and injury too often. He's had a, a very, very good career has been swift. So chase number one. There's still about a minute 30. We'll see when they cross the finish line. Yeah, that ballpark as they come over the line. Keeping themselves in the race, but not, not much more than that, really. And there are four laps to go for the first two groups and indeed for the peloton when they eventually come through. Well, 160 kilometre race for the men's road race here in Birmingham. Slightly shorter race than they used to for a one day race. We're looking at the uh, leaders of 15 here. Fast pace on the front. Lucas Platt from Australia once again raising his hand and uh, wanting the team car to come forward. So just over 60 kilometres, 62.5k to go. That equates to just under an hour and a half of racing or thereabouts. Local time, they should be in around about four o'clock, if not a bit before. It's been a very fast pace. It has settled down just uh, for this middle phase of racing somewhat. And inside the final hour of racing, that's when you might begin to see the first and early attacks uh, start to come when this group starts to get uh, ripped up. Geraint Thomas exchanging words there with uh, Fred Wright. It'll be very interesting to see how long they leave it to start attacking each other. They at least need to get one more lap under their belt. As we've seen, they're not uh, increasing their lead on chase group number one at one minute 30 behind. As we see Aaron Gate come through, we know he's got some really good form, a turn of speed at the finish. Along with one of the faster men, Ben Swift being in there in the front group of 15. It does have a remarkable uh, record, recent record, Ben Swift, of uh, winning one-day races for medals. He's a back-to-back -back winner of the British National Road Race Championship, and actually during COVID, um, because he won the first, his first British title in 2019, and then uh, there was no British Championship raced in 2020, and uh, he went back in 2021 and uh, won the 2021 British National Road Race Championship as well. So he held that jersey for three years, even though he only won two titles. Even if his uh, victories in uh, UCI road races for his trade team are relatively few and far between these days, he's often deployed as a domestique for the Ineos Grenadiers. He takes his opportunity when he rides uh, for his country or for a national championship. Yeah, after a certain number of years, riders do uh, get tagged as a certain type of rider. And Ben Swift's one that we call a winner. He knows how to win when he's put in a good position. And look at that, the peloton now coming over the line. Mark Cavendish just exchanging a word with his teammate Sam Brand. He's not pleased about something. Sam Brand had just actually... He just dropped back to the team car, Sam Brand, and had a word with the uh, with the director sportif in the team car, and he's gone up to Mark Cavendish. And actually, I think Rochelle, I, I misread the situation at the beginning. I, I understand that it's quite obvious they don't have team radios. I should have established that before, but they are uh, the communication is being done in a, a very analog manner here, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's uh, one of the uh, Commonwealth Games rules which uh, makes the bike race a little bit more interesting that they don't have direct communication with their director and that's why we
we also see a lot of uh, hands going up to uh, have their director come up. We saw that little mishap where the team car went back to service uh, one of the Australians, Miles Scottson, in the chase group, while Lucas Plapp in the front group was having a bit of issues. So definitely no race radios here. Makes it a different type of race. And we see a lot more chit-chat between the riders out on the road. Chase groups uh, making some inroads on the uh, front group. Now only a minute 20 behind. The front group very relaxed, just uh, rolling over. And uh, without those race radios, they won't be getting a direct indication from the team car of the uh, chase group getting a little bit closer. It's a very good point, actually. I haven't seen a blackboard. There must be a blackboard somewhere in this yeah. race coming up and giving them an indication of what the time gap is because they do seem tactically firmly in control of it. There is. I was going to say the great Geraint Thomas, but uh, is that hyperbole? I think not really. He, is, uh, he has been one of the greats of the modern peloton and continues to be so. A third place at the Tour de France this year, delivered without flawless self-confidence. Luke Plapp is uh, an emerging project for the Ineos Grenadiers, a young rider of whom a lot is hoped. Australia have waited a while since... Uh, the great Cadell Evans to have a uh, genuine prospect in terms of the, the general classification. Now it's far from certain whether Luke Platt will be that rider, but there are plenty, Rochelle, who believe uh, that Platt could, given the right set of circumstances, develop into a GC rider, possibly even for the Grand Tours. Well, we saw him win the Australian National Champion, which is uh, really what put his name on the board uh, internationally, because the Australian Road Championships is very hilly and very hard. And uh, as we saw when he first made it into this break, he looked to be a little bit in panic that he was the rider in the break. Um, so not used to being in a team environment where he is the leader and the pressure is put on him. Yeah, that's interesting in itself, isn't it? So GC racers uh, themselves don't tend to get in breakaways, and nor do domestiques. And Luke Plapp has had a, a slow and gentle introduction to his career at the Ineos Grenadiers, but the bits and pieces that we've seen, actually, from Luke Plapp have been mighty impressive. But they have been in support of other riders so far. And also under direct uh, direct radio instructions from yep. the team car. So a little bit nervous in this uh, breakaway about what to actually do and how to win the bike race. Aaron Gate from New Zealand just comes through on the front. Iron Gate, though, I mean, what a, what a game so he is having, Iron Gate. Very few riders can do this as effectively as he has. Uh, dominate the track in all these different endurance events, which were quite different. But uh, then to come to the road and be as good as he was in the individual time trial and then come to the road race and get in the move of the day, I mean, he's the, uh, for me, he's the rider of the games. Well, don't forget about Georgia Baker because she also has won three gold medals. If Aaron Gate was to uh, win today, he'd pick up his fourth gold medal. But uh, Georgia Baker, in the women's race earlier, she won the team's pursuit in the points race and the road race. That's a perfectly reasonable position, Rochelle. I'll, I'll allow you to make that claim on her behalf. Yeah, she's been magnificent as well. Now, three gold medals at one Commonwealth Games is outstanding for any rider, male or female. Just a reminder of who's here. Sam Watson, Kate, Caden Hopkins of Bermuda, Ben Swift, Sam Culverwell of uh, Guernsey, Luke Papp, the rider we've just been talking about, Pierre Andre Kutz uh, from Canada, Iron Gate, Fred Wright, and uh, Ben Turner, Aaron Gate, Garen Thomas, Finn Crockett, Sean Flynn, Daryl Impey, and Moni Van Niekerk. So 57.3 kilometers to go. Still too far out to launch a, a sustainable attack, you'd have thought. I mean, the fact of the matter is that Wat van Aert doesn't ride for a country uh, in the Commonwealth, because Wat van Aert would probably consider attacking from here, but very few other riders would. I think these riders want to establish a little bit more of a uh, break over that chase group before they start attacking one another. Maybe after we see them come through the finish line after the next lap. It's still quite early. 
bit of a stretch there for the South African. But the cook. Then a kick. He might at some point be uh, asked to set up an attack for Daryl Indy. Uh, always pressure from the English on the front. Fred Wright is actually really stepping on it here. Just up and over the little brow of that uh, bridge. Fred Wright has injected a little bit of extra pace into this group. Perhaps sensing that uh, they were stalling a little bit and some of the some of the momentum needed to be restored to this front group. And at the back, it's his teammate Jake Stewart who's off the front of that group. Just slightly working on the front now. The pace has picked up a little bit in the chase group. One minute 19 be behind the uh, front riders. The lead group of 15. But it just doesn't seem as consistent in the chase group. One minute and 19 seconds, though. The gap has come down a little bit, as you rightly say, about 14 seconds. And I think that was Fred Wright's way of just waking the bunch up a little bit at the front. Just reminding them uh, that this is not over yet and that the chase group could still get back on if they start to let up. If they were to bring it down to uh, a, a minute and under a minute, then it is very much a different dynamic would ensue because if they... Uh, start to feel at the front that the chase group is po could possibly come back, riders will start to play games there. One of the big indications of the chase group getting within one minute of the lead group is that the cars behind the lead group need to pull to the side and wait until the chase group comes past and sit behind the chase group. So if the cars disappear from behind the front group, then we know the chasers are coming in side one minute. Over 100 kilometres already raced, 55 remain. Five have uh, been raced. One for Nico, one two South African riders on the front. Well, wouldn't it have been great to see uh, Tom Pidcock also in the mix here? A very close friend of Ben Turner trained together in cycle cross indeed and also a very good friend of sam watson who's the rider from uh, england they grew up together effectively almost as surrogate brothers uh, the watsons and the pidcocks are very very close and sam watson is a, a na close neighbor of where tom pidcock grew up in leeds so that uh, that group of riders know each other extremely well as we look at uh, sean flynn in conversation with the directors in the scotland team car sean flynn and Finn Crockett, both there for Scotland. Just Mark Stewart in the chase group as well, don't forget. Looking at the team director there, it seemed like he was asking for his riders to give a little bit more speed on the front of this group. Scarrant Thomas just does his turn on the front. And there is Warwick. There is the coronated spire of... Uh, St. Mary's Church dominates the skyline. You can see the old centre of Warwick sits on a little hill. And whichever way you approach Warwick, uh, you can see St. Mary's sitting on the top of the hill. And it's a very compact medieval centre to uh, Warwick, but absolutely beautiful. And Jury Street itself is marked at either end by two old gatehouses through which the race passes. Look at the crowds that have gathered here, though. Fabulous. And there is St. Mary's Church, uh, just undergoing a little bit of renovation work at the moment, but still very much open to the public. A long nave, some beautiful glass in there, dating back to the early uh, 12th century. I popped in there the other day to have a look around. It was lovely to get out of the bright sunshine, actually, and into the cool of St. Mary's. And just around the corner from there, uh, Warwick have closed off the square, the main square in the old heart of the town, and there is a festival going on, Commonwealth Games Festival. They've laid out deck chairs, there's a big screen, the cafes have laid out tables, all in the open air. So back to the front of the race with 53 kilometres to go of this 160 kilometre race in Birmingham at the Commonwealth Games. This is flat just off the back there. 
But talking about the crowds here, hasn't Fred Wright won a lot of fans over the last couple of months? What an amazing Tour de France he had. There is the, uh, the, he certainly did. There is the festival in the heart of Old Heart of Warwick. They've laid out some artificial grass that will be removed and taken away there. It's a lovely square there. And uh, the cafes and pubs doing a really good business as they all sit back and watch the road race on the big screen that is uh, rattling around their very streets. If they actually bothered to get off the deck chair, they could go and see it with their real, with their actual eyes. Here's Luke Platt in conversation and more and more we're seeing this Rochelle riders going back to discuss tactics with their team directors in the car yeah something very uh, new and different for the riders not to have race radios and having to actually go back and talk directly with their directors about what to do it's been quite noticeable that ben swift hasn't done that at the front he'll just be calling the shots uh, on his own of his own devices i think Garrett Thomas as well, riders that have a lot of experience, they know what needs to be done, they know how they're in the race to go, they know how their legs feel. Yeah. They know better than any director could probably know. Exactly. And Garrett Thomas uh, comes into this race very focused because of his misfortune in the time trial. I don't know whether you remember Rochelle from the uh, Glasgow Games in 2014 in the men's road race, there was a, a fantastic moment where I think with 125 kilometres to go, Pete Kenyuk attacked from the Isle of Man and was off the front. And uh, it was a slightly mystifying attack because it was ambitious, to say the least, attacking with 125 kilometres solo to go. And uh, Mark Cavendish, who I can't remember why, but he wasn't actually racing the road race that year, was in the team car. And he came up alongside uh, Pete Kenyuk and wound the window down and berated him loudly. And the camera caught pretty much everything. The camera caught pretty much everything. It was just quite funny to see Mark Cavendish in that role and Pete Kenyon's furious reaction. <laughs> well, I think Mark Cavendish would make a quite an interesting uh, race director. Team, I think, team I think he'd make a terrifying team manager. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. There are some riders that are cool, calm and collected. Let's say like Daryl Lindy that would make a good team manager. And there are other riders that race on emotion like Mark Cavendish. We saw a few shots of him back in the peloton, certainly wasn't happy about something that was happening. He's just hoping this man, Ben Swift, has really got the legs because he would love to be in that front group. Well, that is the front of the peloton. And uh, New Zealand and the Isle of Man have control of the, pel of the peloton, but they're not racing it hard. They're not racing to pull it back. They are just riding a tempo that will get the race done. Unless they completely flip their tactics, in uh, which case we need to keep an eye out on that. I think there's a little bit of injection being put into that front uh, lead group of 15 with 50 kilometres to go. Just uh, getting some time checks from their race directors back at Team Car, knowing there's still a very, very strong chase group of six riders. There's the pump rooms at uh, Royal Leamington Spa, a very elegant spa town that is essentially part of Warwick, almost. I'm sure that they have a totally separate identity, but geographically the two places are linked. And there's a beautiful theatre as well, the spa theatre in Leamington Spa. I've done my one-man show in the past a few times. Geraint Thomas on the front. Daryl Impey from South Africa. And then Ben Turner. We're inside 50 kilometres now. And this is where we start to enter the end game period. The urgency a little bit more intense at the front of the race. Riders choosing this precise moment to, uh, a lot of them, take energy gels. But it often happens in a race when you see uh, another rider in the breakaway take a gel, you find it a good opportunity, and then everyone starts taking a gel at the same time, just to prevent being attacked while you have food in your mouth. Caden Hopkins. Going back for sustenance from his team car and uh, Luke Platt just drifting to the back again. 
And very interesting from Luke calling Clapping. For, to calling to for his car again. It wasn't so long before he, since he's been, uh, had a conversation, actually. He's definitely the rider in this breakaway that's been back to the team car the most. I think, yeah. um, as we say, very young and uh, a little bit inexperienced without race radios. Really wanting to have some clear direction from the director on how to race this and do the best he possibly can for Australia. Obviously, they came into this uh, Commonwealth Games hoping they'd have Caleb Hill and Rowan Dennis. Rowan Dennis falling extremely ill after the win at the time trial. He was in hospital all day yesterday, so best wishes to Rowan Dennis. Hope he feels a little bit better soon. Gallbladder problem, we understand, uh, which is uh, deeply unpleasant. So, yeah, best wishes to Rowan Dennis and a swift recovery. And to Caleb Ewan, were you surprised to see that Caleb Ewan didn't race? Yeah, because um, I think Australia really did build the team around him with the other selections of the riders in the team. And knowing that uh, Mark Cavendish had the Isle of Man, I think with both of those teams present um, in full force, that uh, there would have been a little bit more control of the breakaways, having both Australia and the Isle of Man wanting to keep it together for a sprint. Well, Fred Turner. Fred Turner, Fred Wright is uh, riding on the front. Ben Turner at the back for England. He's just become the latest rider to call for the team car. You can see the England team car come up alongside Ben Turner. There he is at the back as uh, they come over the start finish line now with three laps to go. So we're into the last 48 kilometres of the race, the last hour and a bit of racing, hour and a tiny bit. And through they go, that group of 15 riders, still with Ben Turner in conversation with. Uh, DS in the England team car, Matt Bramier, from Liverpool, but raced for Ireland. You can see too, as these riders change direction on the course, that they are starting to turn and pull off in a different direction. So generally, the riders on the left will be pushing the wind. As they swing off to the right, they get a bit of recovery. Protected from the riders coming through. Chase group still with 500 metres to go before they pass through the, uh, the, the finish line. So they've made no significant inroads at all on the front of the race. And ultimately, they were never going to. This chase group uh, counter-attacked too late. The gap was already too big to the front of the race for these riders to actually... Uh, actually managed to get across. Peloton is now six minutes down, and this group are round about one minute and 30, 35 seconds down. And that's where they've been for a very long time, haven't they? Yeah. So maybe they, uh, in hindsight, would have wanted to ride it a little bit differently, maybe more aggressive right at the start, or save a little bit of energy until the uh, front group tired a bit. But you've got six chasers versus 15 of the best riders in the World Peloton, working together out the front. Now, there is, as we said, we might see after they cross through the finish line, a little bit of cat and mouse. And that's when the chasers could have a chance to make contact. Just see riders in the front group there looking around at each other. And we might soon see some attacks from this front group. 46.7 kilometres to go. Luke there, Luke Platt. Platt. You're absolutely right. Luke Platt, the first rider to attack. And he does have to attack. The one thing Luke Platt doesn't really have is a fast finish. He takes with him a very alert uh, counter-reaction from the South African Van Nierkirk. And Platt and Van Nierkirk have flown the coop and the uh, breakaway is starting to attack itself. Well, Lucas Platt won't get any help from the South African. South African comes through, but will it be committed knowing that he's got Daryl Lim here behind him? Well, look who's shutting it down. Geraint Thomas of Wales is coming across to try and uh, end this attack from Van Niekerk and his Ineos Grenadiers teammate, Luke Clapp. It's a big right-hander as they head away now from Warwick and out into open countryside. Aaron Gate still also working along with Ben Turner from the Ineos Grenadiers and from England. Gate swings off, though. Van Niekerk of South Africa, I thought he might not do work, but uh, let's see when Lucas Clapp pulls over if he comes through. Yep, he's coming through for another strong turn. So they've got a little bit of a gap. Are they strong enough? There's hesitation from behind from the front group. There is. And a big attack now coming from. Looks it's like it's Ben Turner 
Well, it's an English uh, rider. It's one of the three, isn't it? A little bit distant, that shot to just work out. Does look like it might be Ben Turner. Well, this will be good for the two riders out in front. And this is what England have to do. They do have the numerical advantage. That's Sam Watson, actually, who's made it across. So Sam Watson is at the front of the race. A uh, very, very economical counter-attack there. So Watson has joined in the uh, Platt Van Niekerk group. And how comfortable does Sam Watson look? As he was really doing that good. big attack across, he was even able to take a gel. So Lucas yep. Platt looks behind and sees that it, uh, it's a New Zealander of Aaron Gate on the front chasing. This is the problem now that Aaron Gate and Geraint Thomas face a little bit. They're so strong, the pair of them. But they are pursuiters and uh, they are expected to shut down this gap and everyone is sitting on their wheels. You'll start to see some serious frustration from Geraint Thomas. Nobody coming through to chase down these three riders. Well, well a lot of them have teammates. I mean, the, um, Daryl Impey's teammate is up the road and uh, the two other England riders, they won't ride because Sam Watson is part of the trio at the front. Well, it's Aaron Gate that's doing the work now, so Garrett Thomas will be grateful for that. Yeah, Gate and Thomas effectively acting like a two-man team at the moment at the front of this race. Well, Aaron Gate trying to get uh, the riders there to roll through for a turn, but he's not getting any help. He knows it'll just be himself and Garrett Thomas. And all the riders towards the back of that group are playing a very smart race, aren't they? Ben Swift is gambling that this will all come back together again. Well, Sam Watson also has the right to sit on these two riders, so that's the advantage England have of being in such a strong position with three riders they had in that breakaway. So we have only got the two riders, Van Nika from South Africa and Lucas Platt doing turns. And as they tire a little bit, it looks like the uh, chasers or what was the front group are making their way back. Oh, great move. And it's uh, a gap that's growing on the road. Well, look Luke at this. Platt and Sam Watson. Sam Watson rolling through now. Garrett Thomas, he is working so hard trying to chase this down. That was a big turn from Garen Thomas to close down that gap. He won't be able to do this uh, too many times, Garen Thomas, but this is a monster ride. He's got everyone on his wheel. He's dragging Ben Turner across. Garen Thomas, he's mouth open there. Even for a rider like Garen Thomas, that really took some doing. But he has shut down this move. Luke Plepp looks round and sees his Ineos Grenadiers teammate uh, shutting the move down. Now for sure we'll see a counter-attack Have to, really, English. from England. We're having a look around. Turner, It'll is he winding it up? He lays off a, a bike length or two to Thomas. But I think Turner was actually struggling just to hold Geraint Thomas's wheel there. Yeah, he might take a few deep breaths here before he has a, a go. It's really put uh, number 14, Cahid and Hopkins, under a little bit of pressure. As they ease up, he makes contact with the group. And you can see... Ben Swift there just uh, swiftly rolling around on the back of the wheels. Playing a very, very clever game, Ben Swift. He has spent a lot more time on towards the back of this group than most of the other senior riders in this group. And that's an excellent recovery from Caden Hopkins as well, from Bermuda. Very resilient ride from Hopkins. He was under pressure there and just dropped a little bit. Under the power of that acceleration from uh, Geraint Thomas, who shut that trio of riders down. Well, you can see now Daryl Inky is marking the Englishman. He knows that there's likely to be another move, given that they've got three riders in this group. Which ones are going to be, Turner or Wright? Right. Interesting makeup of riders here. 42 kilometres to go. They're coming into the business end of this bike race. Here we go, Ooh, winding attack. it up from the back. It's Turner, I think, this time. Yep, Ben Turner, who goes on the offensive, the big Yorkshireman. What a powerful rider he is. And Sean Flynn there from Scotland, just covering that move. 
And all the riders know now, this close to the finish, they've got to keep covering these moves. Now, interesting, Ben Swift picks this move. He will have known a lot about Turner, obviously their teammates. He's raced with him. And uh, he was just waiting for this attack from Ben Turner. And this time, Ben Swift goes. And he goes with Sean Flynn. And is that Daryl Impey? Daryl Impey on the back there as well. This is a very, very powerful full rider group. Sam Culverwell, brilliant rider from the 21-year-old from Guernsey to get across. And Garrett Thomas forced once again to close another little gap with Tim Crockett on his wheel. Well, it's all down to the English to make this hard now. This will be the way, all the way to the finish line now. The English will be attacking and counter-attacking. We've just got to make sure that they're doing more damage to the riders behind them than to themselves. So, Impey. Impey just keeping the pace high. Here, Here comes we go. another attack. Fred right this time. So it is the England 1-2-3. Well, Look Garrett up. Thomas is ambitious. He's covering all these moves, trying to jump straight onto the wheel. Very impressed. Very impressed by uh, Sam Culverwell to pick that wheel there. Fred Wright goes. Garrett Thomas, Sean Flynn of Scotland, and Sam Culverwell of Guernsey. But, uh, Aaron Gate and uh, and Luke Platt shut that one down. A little rise in the road, though. Fred Wright exploits that and puts the pain into all those other riders. Garrett Thomas is hurting here. And that quartet of riders just move a little bit clear again of Aaron Gate. Wow, this is going to be dynamic stuff all the way between here and the finish line. And these are great racing roads for just this kind of uh, racing as well. Yeah, once the attacking starts, it's unlikely that they'll uh, start to work together again. We're going to see exciting racing all the way to the finish now. Well, they look round and Culverwell goes on the offensive, or he thinks about it anyway, or he's keeping the pressure on. The man from Trinity Racing. He's having a sensational ride, isn't he? Very, very strong. Well, it is. They produce some good riders at uh, Trinity Racing. No doubt about it. Tom Pitcock formerly raced for Trinity Racing. And it eases up again. They stall and they wait for the next attacks that are coming. Inevitably, there's a rider on the move, I think, on the left-hand side. Are we missing a, a rider going on the offensive? Impey just now, oh, maybe he's thought better of it. Yeah, there is an attack on the left-hand side of the road, and it's come from Ben Swift. Oh, super interesting. He's waiting for some riders to come across. He knows he won't make it to the finish just by himself. He's following the wheel of Pierre-Andre Coates, and Swift going clear. To the Kubrick rider from Canada. We're just covering the moves there, Ben Swift. Not as interested as the other riders to try for a breakaway. He knows he's got the speed against these riders, so he wants to keep his work to a minimum. He'll just use the power of his kick to keep jumping on the riders. So still 15 riders in this lead group, and it's the English that keep the pace going. Watson again. So it is one, two, three. Watson, turn a right. Watson, turn a right. And it's Watson uh, who goes again. That's the South African. Van Niekerk on his wheel. Like it could be Ben Swift doing the job to close that one down. He wants to be in the mix for the sprint finish. Barrel MP. And they have got a gap now. You can see six or seven riders, including Sam Culverwell, Aaron Gate. Geraint Thomas isn't there, so Geraint Thomas will be expected to work to shut this one down. Ben Swift, Ben Turner. I think both the South Africans might be there. Daryl Impey is definitely there. Well, this is turning out to be very, very interesting. So that big turn we saw from Gar Garrett Thomas has really, really stung his legs. Really How strong does Impey look today? He won't he give up, though, because he knows they'll be pl playing a bit of cat and mouse out in front, so he'll be hoping that it comes back together. And Nico is there, you know. So South Africa have got two in this group. England have got two. And here is Garrett Thomas with the rest of the race, including Fred Wright of England, Sean Flynn, Matt Taggart of Northern Ireland, Luke Platt, Caden Hopkins. But that breakaway has been cut in half by that uh, acceleration. There are eight riders clear of the rest at the moment. And Geraint Thomas trying to chase across. 
And getting there by the looks of it, Thomas. Van Nico working, Calderwell, Aaron Gates coming through, Impey, Ben Turner, Sam Watson. And uh, Finn Crockett of Scotland, plus Ben Swift. How far away is Geraint Thomas? There he is. Well, this front group are going to keep pushing it. So if Geraint Thomas doesn't close this down now, he could be in a bit of trouble. Two Englishmen and two South Africans out in front. And your max support there. Ben Swift, who's a converted uh, Manxman, used to race for England, but uh, is now resident on the Isle of Man. And he's at the front of the race, and Geraint Thomas is almost across now. He's almost dragged the rest of the riders across to the front of that uh, breakaway group. Kevin Hopkins just managing to hold on again as these uh, spurts of pace happen. That's a super impressive ride from Hopkins, it really is. The rider who's still hoping that he can get a, a ride with a uh, Spanish third division team who uh, have been interested in acquiring his signature, a semi-professional team. And we certainly pick up some offers after this ride. And it is Aaron Gate from New Zealand on the front, putting the pressure down. What a massive turn from Garen Thomas again to close down that gap. And they go on the attack again. It's the next move, and it's Ben Turner who goes. Sam Watson looks around to see where everyone else, and this is the second big attack from Ben Turner. Marnie van Nico, how many more times can they all respond? Aaron Gates, Sam Culverwell is starting to look a little bit less fresh. He's done brilliantly so far. Oh, there'll certainly be some tired legs in this front group. Aaron, Aaron Impey looks ominously strong for me, Rochelle. He's just on the wheel of Sam Culverwell, and again, he's so experienced, he's not doing any work that he doesn't have to. He trusts the man from Guernsey to shut, uh, he's strong enough to shut that one down. And Impey is still all over the front of the race, being really well supported by his teammate as well, uh, Marnie van Niekerk. He's certainly uh, riding a smart race, Impey, and he knows that uh, he'll only join those attacks that uh, will really hurt the legs of the likes of Geraint Thomas. Takes the responsibility now, does Impey, of just getting around Luke Clapp and Aaron Gates and uh, trying to get across to the front of the race. that Ben Swift just cruising on the back of the wheels so he's gambling a little bit out here just saving his legs hoping that it keeps coming back together where is Aaron Gate from New Zealand he's trying to cover every single move to ensure that he's up there for the finish Daryl well, Limpy now making it very hard for the other riders first time we've seen the Englishman just uh, flick at the elbow yep Pulls out from second wheel, jumps on the back, wants to see where his teammates are, but Daryl Impey certainly doing some damage here. So Impey, Matt Teggett uh, from Northern Ireland, Ben Turner from England and Aaron Gate. Well, they've got a handy little gap here. Uh, Sam Watson, I should say, is at front of the race from England. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, Aaron Gate, Sam Watson, Daryl Impey. They've got a gap here, Rochelle, and uh, there are some tired legs in that chase group. And they're all looking at each other to do the work. Whereas these, at least three front riders, are willing to push the pace extremely hard. Ooh, so. this is delicate now. Scotland with two riders, they haven't made the break. But look at that from Finn Crockett, that's hardly full commitment. Pierre-André Coates, there's a lot of hesitation and game playing here. Garen Thomas laying right off, and the race getting away from the group at the moment. Garen Thomas, though, out of the saddle, just laying off. Someone's going to have to, if someone's going to go solo to try and get across the front of the race, they need to go now. Obviously, it's not going to be either of the England riders, that, that would be uh, too risky. Looks like Calderwell has gone off the front. So yeah. Calderwell goes, but he's got to try and get across that gap on his own. What's a strong group out in front, those four riders, so... Got Matthew Tedder up the front as well, so Culverwell, he's... Well, it's the right thing to do, Sam Culverwell, and he did get away cleanly, didn't take a rider with him, but is that gap already too big? There he comes, round the corner now, Sam Culverwell. Oh. Aaron Gate, Matthew Teggett of Northern Ireland, Sam Watson of England, and Daryl Impey from South Africa. 
master craftsman, Darrell Impey. He really is a, a master of race tactics. Culverwell is fading a little bit, but the four riders are building their advantage. Oh, what a move for Aaron Gate as well. You were talking about him potentially winning a fourth gold medal here. He's in a good position right now. As the chasers, Garrett Thomas getting a little bit frustrated. Yeah. As we now see Sean Flynn come through for a turn. Garrett Thomas just going to the back, trying to make sure everybody con contributes here. Got too many tired legs. Well, this is a bit of frustration for Garrett Thomas. Frustration too for Ben Swift and the Island Man. Let's not forget they've missed the move. Both the Scottish riders have two. Luke Clapp has. They know what they have to do. The question is, how can they do it? There is a 25-second gap on the road already in between Group 1 and Group 2. Wait, 33 kilometres to go. Swift and Thomas getting together. They have to get together and they have to have a really, really big deep. deep. Wow. Daryl Impey, look at this. These riders are really, really forcing this break. 32 kilometres to go of a 160-kilometre race. And Daryl Impey is the strongest man pushing the pace here. He won't want to take Aaron Gate to the finish. And Sam Watson of England doing some strong turns on the front as well. You see the rider of Northern Ireland, Matthew Taggart. He's just skipping some turns, getting a word there from Sam Watson. Well, Matthew Taggart, 26 years of age, has raced on the uh, British domestic uh, and Irish domestic scene all of his uh, racing life. The man from Banbridge in Ireland. He's never been in a position in a race uh, like this that he finds himself in. He's never taken a victory. Sam Watson is the reigning under-23 British national champion. Darrell Olympia has never won a Commonwealth gold, but uh, he's been in race positions like this often enough. And Aaron Gates is just confirming what we know about him. He's a, just a brilliant rider. And they are, at the moment, holding a 12, 14, 15... Well, it's going to be around about a 25-second advantage over this chase group. Where they have got themselves together now. Sam Culverwell, Ben Swift, Sean Flynn. They are helping to work and sharing the work. But they're not making an impact at the moment. Right here, the motivation is higher. The only win that uh, Matthew Taggart has ever experienced in his life came at the uh, the Ross in Ireland, the uh, famous stage race in Ireland, but it doesn't count as a professional victory, and that was back in 2017, a long time ago. Sam Watson from the break, just taking a bottle at the feed there. And now from the chasers, they can't afford to back off too much. They want to stay in this race. They really need to do something with 31 kilometers to go. 23 seconds. They may be pulling it back a little bit. So it's not over yet for this chase group, but they need to get themselves sorted rapidly. They've got two laps uh, to drag this group back. Full commitment from these four riders, though. Take it on the front from the Whip Sun God team, the British Continental team. Yeah, all riders got motivation to work here. Take out on the front, Sam Watson, Aaron Gate, and Daryl Limpy. It's all in their best interest to establish this breakaway that's now 23 seconds. So they pass, they pass Westgate again, and they drop down and out of uh, Warwick. What a year Sam Watson's having. Oh, that's not good, just seeing uh, Tegart just uh, open the gap there for Sam Watson to come in. Once a rider starts to skip turns, then everyone starts to hesitate a little bit. So Finn Crockett on the front, Lucas Clapp trying to pick up the speed as well. Garen Thomas keen to do some work. Yeah, there's a good look to this chase group now, isn't there? They are pulling it back. Five seconds they've pulled back. Geraint Thomas, they look motivated, they look strong. Sam Culverwell from Guernsey playing his part as well. Caden Hopkins too. They are, I think, bringing them back and possibly bringing them back quite fast. 
Well, they'll be ready for another attack from the English once they uh, make contact. If they do, they're 18 seconds behind the four leaders. Yep. And uh, Lucas Platt just shaking his head there, not getting uh, any assistance. So he can't do it by himself. Garrett Thomas is keen to, to help out, but uh, he doesn't want to overcook himself as well. So a little bit of hesitation there from the chase group. Well, that's the chase group. That's Luke Platt and uh, Geraint Thomas doing the share of work on the front. And that is the lead group. Now, how soon will we see uh, the chase group come around that corner? That's Sam Watson of England, Aaron Gage of New Zealand, uh, Matt Teggett of Northern Ireland and Daryl Impey representing South Africa. Rider number 99. 29.3 kilometres to go. Conversation there between Daryl Impey and Sam Watson. A little brief exchange of words. Aaron Gate wordlessly going through the Australian pursuiter to do his uh, turn on the front. The New Zealander, I should say. Well, isn't he in the form of his life? Already three gold medals here at the Commonwealth Games. These four riders working very well to go together. He has got great experience on the road, of course. He used to ride for the uh, now defunct Aqua Blue team and uh, took part in the Vuelta tour of Spain on two occasions so he's got a great deal of experience on the road we've just never seen him quite this good as this young man has got his entire career ahead of him Sam Watson and it'd be quite the kickstart wouldn't it if he could uh, take home a Commonwealth Games medal especially the gold medal well here's Geraint Thomas really trying to force the pressure of that chase group trying to get some help and everybody to work together they're holding their uh, gap of 18 seconds but they're going to need a little bit more it's not over yet for the chase group Sean Flynn just contributing as well they're all going very smoothly rotating through and off now in the profit yeah that's I don't think that's an 18 second gap I think it's more like 10 seconds there's at least four riders uh, in that uh, chase group that need to do the work there's four riders out in front as well, so... Now, what is uh, what role is Ben Swift playing in all of this? You can see him second from last there, just in front of the rider from uh, Bermuda, Caden Hopkins, and he is the master of doing only the work that is required of him. Well, I said it before, I think he's uh, gambling today, which means that he's just really hoping that enough riders are keen to keep it together. 14 seconds the gap now, so they are closing in with the work of Lucas Clapp, Geraint Thomas, the two riders from Scotland, Finn Crockett and Sean Flynn, doing the uh, majority of the work in this chase group. You can see them when the road straightens out, they can see the quartet of riders at the front. Just okay. the other side of that little, uh, little wooded section there they're going to go through. Well, it's Tegart that's upsetting this because he's just laying off the back, letting riders uh, slip in. And that's when the three other three riders get a little bit frustrated. They don't want to get a bigger tap on the Northern Ireland rider. So he rolls through now. Daryl Linky onto the back. The gap is now down to 10 seconds. They are closing in. But unless they're there, and until they're there, they're not there. I know that sounds obvious, but uh, you can have this momentum at this point. But uh, as Caden uh, Hopkins starts to be put into real difficulty in the chase group, and it could be that that's the last we'll see of Caden uh, Hopkins fairly soon at the front of the race. Or at least in the chase group that's trying to get across to the very front of the race. There he is, Hopkins, under real pressure now. Yeah, he's been fighting all race. He's had a fantastic race to stay in for as long as he has. When they come around to the finish line, they'll have a lot to go. And the chasers know very well that when they make contact, very soon, it looks like they're just making contact, that there will be some more attacks from the Englishmen. Fred Wright probably ready to pounce. Will Ben turn up? I think they're doing it strictly by rotor, aren't they, Rochelle? And by my reckoning, I think it's uh, Ben Turner's turn to attack. Yeah, I think I think you're right there. Use Ben Turner first. Fred Wright. He's got that finishing speed, hasn't he, Fred Wright? If he comes to the line with a group, and anyone in this group, actually, he would fancy his chances. 
against any of them. Yeah, absolutely. What you can see is they've made contact. There's been no immediate counter-attack, but those chasers have done a lot of work. In the meantime, the peloton has only just now come over the uh, start-finish line, and they're seven minutes and 35 seconds down in the front of the race. Now then, this doesn't look good for the chase group. No Geraint Thomas, no Aaron Gate, no Luke Plapp working on the front. Does it come back together? They've joined up. My mistake, my attention was diverted elsewhere, and they have got across. So they've done that job, and they've come back. The front of the race have come back. 26.2k to go. And the uh, breakaway group of four, including Aaron Gate, of course, my mistake, have been caught. So just 11 riders now left in that front group. Captain Hopkins well, uh, trying to move up. Looks like 14 to me. Yeah, Caden Hopkins is still there. <coughs> well, this is where the cat and mouse starts. Riders looking around at each other. DeAndre Coe, and they take this opportunity, all these riders now, that the uh, really hard work has been done there, predominantly by Luke Clapp and, uh, and Geraint Thomas, of taking a drink. I I'm a little bit surprised, uh, Rochelle, aren't you, that there wasn't an instant counter-attack from England? Yeah, but in saying that, uh, well, from England, they sat on for the chase, so they should have been able to uh, counter-attack. Here's the back of the, the, the front group, and Luke Platt needs further consultation or help, or a bottle. A bottle by the looks of it. Uh, has he got one in his cage? No. So Doesn't look like he, it, so. he needs a drink, Luke Platt. Need to drink, that much is clear. Doesn't he? Well. 25 no, kilometers to go, he might be happy to have no bottles, but he definitely wanted some indication of how to ride this last 25 kilometers of the race. Being the sole rider from Australia in this breakaway, what can he do? So we are now on the magnificently named Ugly Bridge Road. It's for real. I'm not questioning it, but I'm a little bit surprised because the bridge that they're approaching to, it's not that ugly, to be honest. Now, it's a beautiful circuit with an ugly bridge. <laughs> well, big attack going now while Lucas Puppy is taking a drink. It is the... Ben Turner. As we expected, the next move comes from England. Ben Turner is the next rider to attack, the Yorkshire rider for England. And he opens up a gap straight away. And this time, Garrett Thomas is right on him, because what Thomas really can't afford to do is close a big gap on his own any longer. He can't do that that repeated number of times, so he's got to make sure that he gets across to Ben Turner's wheel right now and shuts him down. Well, no doubt, after the Tour de France, all of his training would have been speed oriented, a bit of motor pacing. And that's what he'll do from here to the finish. With only 24 kilometers to go, he will try and jump directly on every move that goes. So, Thomas on the front, Sean Flynn, then uh, the mightily impressive Sam Culverwell. Finn Crockett as well, having a great ride from Scotland. Fred Wright and Ben Turner. Sam Watson winding it up. Sam Watson attacks. So the next England attack, the expected move, and just as you described, Geraint Thomas is uh, straight on the wheel to shut that one down from Watson. But Nico going with him. So too is Aaron Gate in the black of uh, New Zealand. Watson continuing to pile it on. And the next attack surely must come from Fred Wright. He's right at the back, though, laying off a little bit, Fred Wright. Just two or three riders in, tucked in behind him. Well, a lot of riders will have the uh, mentality to try and jump on everything that goes now, but uh, a lot of tired legs we see the pressure being applied on the front now. Another rider from England. It's Ben Turner again, I think. And Aaron Gate, he is riding a very, very aggressive race, trying to be in every single move. Ben Turner flicking the elbow, trying to get a move going here with one or two uh, other riders who just found themselves a little 
little bit off the front. Ben Niekerk's there as well as Finn Crockett. Coming up for three hours in the saddle in this race. His total distance was 160k. Now we're entering the last 22.7 kilometers of racing. Fred Wright has maneuvered himself a little bit closer to the front, and that would be the next expected move from England. And a big one too, because he's not had to uh, put his face in the wind for quite a long time. A lot of chases that have been done, he's just been able to sit on. Piandre Coates goes. Following the move of uh, Van Nico of South Africa. Well, constant action here in the uh, front group. Which break or which kick will it be that stays away? Or will it come down to a sprint? Ben Swift, no doubt, counting on that. He goes the big attack now. This is the one. This is the move from uh, Fred Wright. They're expecting it. Such an acceleration on him, Fred Wright. We saw that repeatedly at the Tour de France in race situations not dissimilar to this. And he's so pleased with his silver medal in the time trial. He knows that he's got some uh, some good power against these riders, but it was Garrett Thomas who reacted to that one because he knew the big attack was going to come from Fred Wright. Well, we've got second and third in the individual time trial at the front of this group. Garrett oh. Thomas on the wheel of Fred Wright, then comes Aaron Gate, turning a really big gear. There are marked difference in their cadence. Will Garen Thomas counter-attack this move? I tell you what, Aaron Gate has been covering everything. He's in the form of his life. And as you noted earlier, Aaron Gate, um, and which we saw in the scratch race, has got a sprint on him. He really has. He's got a track sprint. He has, but you just couldn't really put your money on him no. in a straight-up sprint against Ben Swift, who has not done any work on the front. He has played this really well, being the only representative of the Isle of Man in that breakaway. Ben although, Swift. although he's not at the front in the front group there, Rochelle. So Ben Swift has found himself in a, in a little group off the back. Right, so no sign of Ben Swift at the moment. He has. You're right. He's so invisible. He's not there. So that's uh, Luke Clapp, Sam Watson, and Sam Culverwell. That's the front of the race now. I'm really impressed with Culverwell. There's Aaron Gate closing the gap, coming across Sean Flynn, the next rider from Scotland. And then Geraint Thomas. So 10 kilometres of full-on racing have yielded uh, no particular definitive little group that have gone clear. All we know is that a couple of riders are just off the back and uh, struggling a little bit to maintain their place in this in this breakaway, including these two, Pierre Andre Cote of Canada and Marnie Van Niekerk of uh, South Africa. It's really important that Fred Wright is joined here by his teammate. I think, which one is that? It looks like it's Ben Turner and indeed Sam Watson. So England have still got all their three riders at the front of the race. Well, they're not far away now from one lap to go. Caden Hopkins, I think that might be the end for him. And the rider just in front of him there was Ben Swift. So Swift is definitely dropping away. And, uh, and Niekirk doing the big, big turn, big attack on the front. Could this be the winning move? Is it Impey? I think it's Impey, yeah. It's Impey and Culverwell have gone off the front. Well, Impey, he's not going to stop now. He's going to... He wants the young rider from Guernsey to get on the front and work with him, and instantly Culverwell, the 21-year-old, responds. Ben Turner is uh, trying to bring the race back with uh, Matthew Taggart on his wheel. Actually, that's uh, Matthew Taggart on the front now, isn't it? With Culverwell on Turner's wheel, those... Two kits are quite similar from Northern Ireland and Guernsey. And look, all these chases are just uh, creating gaps in that first group as well. Yeah, oh, well, that is not a winning ride from Ben Swift. He can't be recovering from there. Ben Swift won't be winning a medal today. So that's it, the last iron in the fire for the Isle of Man. Mark Cavendish came here with such high hopes. Isle of Man will not be taking home the gold in this edition of the race. Oh, that's very disappointing for Ben Swift. The pace just being too high and too constant. The attacks are coming thick and fast now. So Culverwell, Watson, Flynn, Platt, Gate, Thomas. Just 13 riders left in this now. After Swift and, uh, and Hopkins have dropped. 
It's not going to be like your normal big bunch sprint because these riders have had to pull turns all day. They've been away for at least over 100 kilometers and they've all done a lot of hard work. So it's going to be the fittest rider with fast legs as we see an attack now from the South African. It is Van Nick, Van Nick, Van Nick, but he's following the move of one of the riders from... Uh... It looks like Ben Turner. Yep, it's Turner again from England. Aaron Gate going after them. Good response from the New Zealander. Such an impressive ride from him once again. But that's a big dig from Ben Turner and a great response from a response from Van Nico. I've got to say, the most impressive rider towards the back end of this race for me has been Aaron Gate covering everything. He wants to be there for a gold medal. He wants to be there for a sprint. Garant Thomas as well, great response from him. And everybody else is sitting on the wheel of the Australian Luke Plapp in that chase group. They could do with keeping the momentum of this group going. And they are doing just that. Gate sitting on the front with that pursuiter's beautiful pedal stroke of his. Flicks an elbow and Geraint Thomas will absolutely go through and do his fair share here. But because they... Well, I was going to say they could get away, but uh, that is... It's a big ride being done for the rider on the front of the remainder of the group. Luke Clapp. Can only be uh, doing the work for himself, Luke Clapp, so he might find himself in trouble once there's another attack from Team England. But that breakaway, no doubt being unsuccessful because of the presence of Aaron Gate. He's going to try and put himself in every move just to neutralise it, being the fastest man in this uh, front group. Seventeen kilometres remaining. Turner on the front. They're not far from the finish line. They're going to take the bell next time they come round, and then it's just one remaining circuit, the tenth and final circuit, in around about one kilometre's time. As Geraint Thomas goes on the offensive on the left-hand side of the road, Thomas attacks through the finish line. Van Nieckert goes with him. Luke Clapp had just done a massive turn to get across. Great response from him. Sam Watson following that move. No one able to get clear at the moment, Rochelle. It's fascinating racing. Yeah, it's not uh, because of uh, lack of trying, especially from the English. They are trying absolutely everything to get a rider off the front. As they now take an opportunity to take a drink, take some gels on board. Well, for any rider with legs now, now would be a bad time to attack if you could. While well, riders just ease up a little bit, try and eat some drink and get themselves ready for the final lap. So much cat and mouse and looking around. You can see the pain face on uh, Lucas Platt from Australia there as they come through the start finish line for one lap to go. Aaron Gate attacking on the right, Darrell Impey going with him, and they're following the move of Fred Wright. So, Wright, Thomas, Gate, Impey. Oh, well, this is a really, really dangerous quartet now, Rochelle. This could be a defining moment in the race. Who can respond here? Fred Wright, Geraint Thomas, straight from the Tour de France. Gates with three Commonwealth uh, bronze medals, gold medals, I should say, already in the bank. And Darren Impey, one of the strongest riders in that group. Luke Platt will have his work cut out to bring this one back. Yeah, certainly be uh, a big effort if he could, because these four riders are the riders that we expect could stay away. They're going to work very well together. Sam Watson, Aaron Gate, Daryl Impey and Geraint Thomas find themselves in the break. Well, they're treated to that view of Warwick Castle for the final time. Next time they see it, they will have completed the race. This is the chase group though, Luke Platt doing a good job of chasing them down once again, but this is the second time the Australian has had to shut down a move of this size. And he still hasn't got them either. Daryl Impey driving them on, there comes Platt, it's only a couple of seconds. They go past Ghana corner for the final time. Oh, Pat didn't have, a, didn't have a water bottle last time. Will he get one now from the side of the road? No, he nope. his head. So he's all right. He's obviously feeling great, Luke Platt, and he's riding really well. Feeling great, but what can he do? I mean, he's done two of the big chases, and we know he hasn't got the punch and the speed to just jump on these moves. That's why he's having to do the long diesel chases. Fred Wright is really good at doing this. He recovers extremely well, Fred Wright. And he's able, uh, just when the junction is made, to just to attack and launch another little move off the front, just to see whether, right at the point where they make the junction, they are vulnerable to being dropped again. Well, I'd love to see my fellow Aussie 
there on Dakota, the Canadian, sorry, just uh, just to say the Canadian, the only sole representative of the Canadian of Canada has dropped from the race. Yeah, I was saying I'd love to see uh, Lucas Platt win this race, but I think this man, the New Zealander, Aaron Gay, is going to be very hard to beat. He's so strong. Watch out for Darrell Impey's uh, finishing speed, though. And he is incredibly strong. Now, with the absence of Ben Swift, in terms of the fast men, you probably have to put Gate in the mix. Certainly Darrell Impey. All right, Ned, you put your money on Darrell Impey. I'll put my money on Aaron Gate of New Zealand. Fred Wright as well. I can't rule it out. No, it's pointless making predictions in this race. We all imagined that Ben Swift would uh, be able to mix it with these riders, but he's already been dropped. And watch out for Sam Colberwell as well. I've been so impressed with him. Fred Wright pushing on, following the move of Culverwell on the left. Impey, Gerard Thomas still looking really sharp. Platt towards the back of that group, having just exerted himself again to shut down that last quartet of riders who had a bit of a lead on the road. Two kilometres done of this final closing circuit. 14 kilometres to go, and Gerard Thomas now making uh, the jump under all the moves. Some of these riders, Rochelle, will be thinking, I've got one attack in me. And I've got to leave it until the final uh, kilometre before I launch it. Everybody will be thinking, how many more times can I do this? They have been uh, so evenly matched in so many ways. And in fact, I'm surprised to see a gap this big, uh, a group this big, with just 13.8 kilometres to go as England launch their next attack. Sam Watson this time, once again. Karen looking Thomas round, they just can't seem to get clear. To dig really deep. He was lucky that a rider swung off the front there because Garen Thomas had to close that gap. What a ride. Sean Flynn as well. The two Scotsmen playing their part massively in this. Sean Flynn and Finn Crockett. Great rides from both of them. It was hard to imagine that uh, we won't see the Englishman win. Here goes Lucas Platt for his one last attempt. He doesn't want to come down to a sprint. And there's a reaction. It's probably Fred Wright. Right, Fred Wright. I think it is Fred Wright. I think you're right. Um, everyone knows that they have to keep closing this gap. Aaron Gate in a bit of trouble for the first time. Well, that might have been the last big effort we'll see from Lucas Platt. So it's actually Ben Turner. Luke Platt, Ben Turner. Moni van Niekirk. Sam Culverwell from Guernsey. I can't imagine what they'll be uh, feeling at, at the island of Guernsey at the moment. They've never come close to an Olympic, uh, a, a Commonwealth Games gold medal. You can see the English attacking one after the other, but they are fatiguing, they are getting tired. But it hasn't been as easy as they might have imagined with that numerical superiority and the quality of the trio of riders. The opposition is being stubborn here, and Matt Taggart is glued to the wheel of Fred Wright. Well, who's going to chase this time? It's South Africa, Marnie van Niekirk. That's massively to the benefit of Daryl Impey, who will be sitting on the wheels there. Van Nieker trying to shut this move down. And Fred Wright trying to ride clear with uh, Matthew Taggart from Northern Ireland. So everybody expecting Van Nieker to empty the tank here, to drag this back for his team leader, Daryl Impey. Just look at the pedalling style there of Aaron Gate. He just uh, looks so comfortable. Of course he's not, he's tired. But, uh, all the riders are tired. Yeah, it's a good observation that he looks absolutely just so in control. Aaron Gates spinning a very low gear as well, which is always a good sign that a rider is still on top of their effort. A high cadence, it's called the suppress, the French call it. Looks stylistically so good on the bike, Aaron Gates. So Luke Platt launching that big attack. It all comes down to it back together again. Another move off the front through the trees there. But Nikok has shut that move down, is still riding on the front. What a strong ride this is from the South African, the man from uh, Pauteng province. Centurion is where he grew up, races on the South African domestic scene. Well, interestingly there, he was setting it up for an attack from uh, Daryl Impey, but he looks back and Daryl Impey shakes his head and says, no, not at the moment, mate. So Daryl Impey <laughs> just sitting back. I'd rather not be quite tired. It's been brutal. It really has. Iron Gate sitting there in the black of New Zealand, looking ominously strong. England still with all these irons in the fire. And Here Darren Impey now does launch the attack. Van Niekerk setting this up in the South African, the great South African. 
arguably the greatest South African who's ever raced at Paralympic, is off and running. And uh, closed down by Sean Flynn there of Scotland. And the big man, Ben Turner, is there. Aaron Gay closing as well. Rochelle, these riders are so evenly matched, aren't they? No one can make the difference. Well, they all did equal turns, apart from Ben Swift, who's not there now. And early on, a little bit of hesitation from Luke Butt, but he certainly made up from that for that. Uh, all these riders have done a lot of hard work to establish that nearly 10-minute lead. Well, here goes another big attack with no responses from the peloton. Watson it is this time, the English rider. Could this be the, the move? From the Leeds. winning move. Yeah, there is no immediate uh, response. A little bit of a descent now. Sam Watson opening up a lead on this descent. Who's going to ride? The Scottish rider, Sean Flynn. Sam Calderwell accelerating, trying to sprint clear of the rest to try and ride across to the wheel of Sam Watson on his own. Well, Sam Watson sees the gap and he will continue to apply the pressure. They've had the strength in numbers. Will this be the winning move? It's only Calderwell that's really in contention of chasing this down. A lot of hesitation back in the group. Well, look at his, it is Aaron Gate, though, who's taking the responsibility on the front of the bunch. Well, he's, he's trying to swing over, he's not getting any help. Culverwell's this... getting across. It's a brilliant counter-attack from Culverwell. Definitely could be the winning move from Watson and Cul Culver Culverwell. Here we go, Daryl Impey looking around to see where his teammate is, and uh, Van Niekirk moves to the front. Daryl Impey gambling that this will come back, just drifts onto the wheel of Aaron Gate. And Van Niekirk has to do it all over again. He's only just shut down a big gap. Sam Watson wants to uh, keep Culverwell at bay. He doesn't want to be joined by the rider from, uh, from Guernsey. He knows just how good he is. 21-year-old. Well, he wants to win solo, Sam Watson, and he is riding his way to a gold medal here. Desperation from Culverwell trying to get to that back wheel. Sam Watson not easing up one little bit. Two youngsters at the front of the race. Sam Watson, just 20 years of age, the reigning under-23 under British national champion, joined by a 21-year-old from Guernsey. Well, Culverwell's made it, and directly Sam Watson's flicked the elbow. He doesn't want to ride to the finish with Culverwell just sitting on. And this could be a big disadvantage for Sam Watson because he's not happy to just ride with Culverwell on the wheel. Well, Sam Watson, in theory, but only in theory, uh, might have the faster finish than uh, Sam Culverwell. You'd have thought, but ordinarily, uh, they've not found themselves in a race situation like this within touching distance of a gold medal at a major game. Sam Watson, Sam Culverwell, one from Guernsey, one from England. We, they have a lead, uh, but they can't afford to play games with one another because their chase is still on and still in contention. Yeah, not an organised chase, but still some riders there willing to have a little bit of a dig. I think it's about Nico, isn't it, who's sitting on the front of the South Africa. They're using him at the moment. The Scottish might have to dedicate one rider as well to try and bring this back. But at some point, Rochelle, these riders could start thinking about the bronze medal in the chase group. If they sense that the gold and the silver have gone, that could confirm uh, that these two won't be caught. They're working well together now. Sam Watson just wants to make sure that Paul Bullwell does equal amount of turns, and they now look committed. That's a huge gap. I don't know if that's bridgeable any longer. It looks like the gold medal battle is there, and it's uh, going to be between those two riders. Well, Sam Watson, he initiated that winning move. Just that momentary hesitation. The gap grew, and it grew fast, and then suddenly, a minute or so later, we're left with that race situation, and I don't think... Uh, even a Geraint Thomas turn with Aaron Gates on the front could do much about that. Well, 8.2 kilometers to go. These two are not going to let uh, the pressure off the pedals. They're going to ride this right to the finish. Both riders would be happy with the medal. Colwell, he is now motivated to do equal turns. They've got 14 seconds over the chase group. Has anyone got the legs left in the chase group? They look like they've given up on it, although they still have them in sight there. That makes a big difference when you can see them in sight. 7.8 kilometres to go. Still, it's Van Niekirk who's riding on the front. 
The two England riders there waiting to counter-attack if that group comes back together again. Ben Turner and Fred Wright, of course. Luke Clapp is at the back. Geraint Thomas hasn't done a turn to try and bring this back. Just monitoring the situation for the middle of that pack. Aaron Gate as well, hoping that uh, Van Nieker does the lion's share of trying to bring this group back. Eric Thomas now drifting right to the back of that group. Patiently thinking about uh, how to approach the final 7.4 kilometers of this uh, of this road race. And they're out of sight around that corner, and still Van Niekerk is on the front. But I think the South African is tiring now. Yeah, we're getting closer and closer to the finish. Probably while putting in some really big hard turns. Passing through the outskirts of Leamington Spa, heading inexorably towards the finish line. An England flag waved at the side of the road, an English rider at the front of the race with a rider from Guernsey. And now Aaron Gate is on the front. And this might change things, Rochelle. A big turn from Gates here. He's such an honest rider as well. Might just uh, swing things back in the in the favour of the chase. He's not getting much support there, Aaron Gates. It's not really his responsibility being the only rider there. Someone has to do the work. Yeah, he it peels won't off. Be the Englishman, that's for sure. There's still a 14-second gap between the leaders and the group as yeah. the kilometres are ticking down. 6.4 kilometres to go. MP, I think, has settled for uh, the chance of a bronze medal here. The Salakan found himself on the front after his teammate Marnie van Niekerk had done his turn. As we can see, St Mary's holding into view, and they approach to Warwick. Just 6.2 kilometres remaining in this race. And I think the bronze medal is uh, uppermost in the thoughts of the chasers now, and they've accepted uh, that these two are probably home and host. A little bit of communication between those two, and, uh, and a little bit of gamesmanship creeping in now from Sam Watson. Calverwell looked round, and uh, he asked Sam Watson to come through. Watson most notably didn't, and instead took a drink. Calverwell pushes on. Uh, but that won't help their chances still with uh, six kilometres to go. They are not at the finish line with that medal safe yet. Well, Cobblewell, I think, has to settle for the silver medal here because Sam Watson has the right to sit on. He's trying to push the pace, but he doesn't want to do more work than Cobblewell. He wants to be fresh for the finish. Well, that English have ridden the textbook race here. Bit of discussion there. As the chase group just creep in another couple of seconds. Oh, this is getting tight. Sam Watson looks behind. 5.5 kilometres to go. Will these two be racing it out for gold? Has the chase group given up or are they still chasing? I don't know. I'm Rochelle, I'm already fast forwarding in my mind to the, what the finish line looks like in the long last kilometre. And that rise, you can almost imagine him being these two being caught if they start to look at each other and turn it into a track sprint because that gap has come down uh, remarkably now. And Scotland are committing. It's Sean Flynn who's doing the work for his teammate Finn Crockett on the front. And a number of teams are activated in this chase now. The England duo of Fred Wright and Ben Turner just lurking on the wheels. But Darren Impey's hit the front and he's doing a turn now. But Niekirk has recovered, he slots in on the wheel of uh, Darrell Impey. And now he gets on the front as well. So Van Niekirk has been such an important rider for uh, Darrell Impey. And they are beginning to shut the two down at the front of the race. Well, it's going to be close, 4.5 kilometres to go. They've only got a handful of seconds, no more than about three or four seconds on the road at the moment. 4.4k to go. Culverwell beginning to look really tired. Watson. As you say, he has the right to sit on because he's got teammates coming up from behind. And they are making progress now. Van Niekerk and Impey brings Fred Wright, Ben Turner back into the equation. Aaron Gate, Garant Thomas still in that group. Matt Teggett of uh, Northern Ireland. Calvin Wells turning himself inside out here. And that might ultimately be to the benefit of Sam Watson. But it's a really, really brave ride from the uh, rider from Guernsey. And still they haven't been caught. Four kilometers to go. Oh, 3.9 kilometres to go, they can see that they're being chased down, but it is the job of the Englishman to keep the pressure on and make the other teams work really, really hard. And Niekirk is doing it all on his own at the moment. Oh, Impey that. getting a great, great bit of service from his teammates here. In the 
sprint though. He won't have much of a lead out left. Darryl Limpy, it'll be every man for himself in that very difficult sprint to gauge. We saw Georgia Baker in the women's race sprinting, opening up her sprint from 300 metres to go and just about holding everyone else off. But a monster ride from Marnie van Niekerk here. He has brought them back. Well, just about, not quite, but nearly there. Very what nearly an exciting there. finish, 3.3 kilometres to go. And Fred Wright, he'll be looking uh, very, very confident now with the job being done by Team England. So the fast man, Daryl Impey, Fred Wright. Sam Watson attacks just at the last moment when uh, Van Niekerk was almost there and almost making contact. And Sam Culverwell, once again, able to follow the wheel of Sam Watson. And Van Niekerk is just pinned to the front. No support from any other team. It's all about South Africa's uh, Marnie van Niekerk as well at the moment as Watson flicks an elbow. Calderwell does come through. 2.8 kilometres to go. Everybody getting very nervous. It's agonising to watch van Niekerk here. What an enormous ride it is from the uh, man from Haupeng near can, Johannesburg. Can Darryl Impey finish it off? He takes his last drink. Just dangling off the front, but you sense that Watson could attack again. He's yep. looking fresher than Carverwell. Just lays off a little bit, Watson. And it would suit his teammates perfectly if he did just that. Looks in the eyes of Sam Carverwell. And still Van Niekerk hasn't made the junction. 2.2 kilometres to go. The agony for Van Niekerk continues. to go and finally Van Niekerk is done. Well Daryl Impey also swung off. Oh has he? It was Impey just swinging off and Van Niekerk continues to ride on the front but Impey has just uh, dropped back and taken a position a bit further down the line. Well here goes Garrett Thomas. Big dig from Garrett Thomas. The Welshman tries to ride clear of everyone else and he comes shooting past and Garrett Thomas has waited for this moment to attack. 1.7 kilometers to go for the Welshman. Can he hold on then? This is it, this is his terminal effort, and England are going to have to chase. Ben Turner, his teammate from the Ineos Grenadiers, with Fred Wright on his wheel, with the battle of his life to get across to the Welshman. Geraint Thomas won't be intimidated by the distance, but he has invested so much in this race, and over the last 10 kilometres or so, Geraint Thomas has been hiding in the wheels for this moment and this moment alone. I was so determined after the time trial to give it his best in the road race. Garen Thomas is at the one kilometre to go banner now. Can he make it to the finish? What can the English do? They've worked so hard throughout this race. Can they finish it off? Garen Thomas, what a handy little lead inside the final kilometre. Turner hasn't got much more to give now. All that anger, all that frustration from the individual time trial where he wanted gold, Garen Thomas, and could maybe should have got gold. Fred Wright encouraging Ben Turner, Luke Platt then uh, attacking on the inside and they're going to pull him back, Luke Platt the teammate, two teammates of Gerard Thomas from the Ineos Grenadiers trying to hunt the Welshman down, 600 metres to go for Thomas, Fred Wright sitting pretty with Darren Limpy on his wheel and Aaron Gate, Thomas is caught and uh, Luke Platt though on the front with all these fast men on his wheel including Finn Crockett from Scotland, Fred Wright now on the front, Darren Limpy, Aaron Gate, Fred, Finn Crockett, here comes Fred Wright, but he's got some real sprinting power on his wheel. Fred Wright opening up his sprint now. Right then for England, trying to push for the line. Fred Wright, can he be caught? Darrell Impey, the South African on his wheel. Impey opening up his sprint, Aaron Gate down the middle. Gate into the front, Gate is going to take gold again. Four times a gold medalist. Aaron Gate, unstoppable at the Commonwealth Games. A brilliant ride for the New Zealander. Well deserved, and in the end, unquestionably the fastest of the sprint. What a ride from Aaron Gate. Well, not just purely the fastest in the sprint, but what fitness did he have and uh, covering all those moves towards the finish, convincingly wins the 160 wow. kilometer. Men's Silver to Darrell Impey, Finn Crockett takes the bronze medal uh, in brilliant fashion. And England, in the end, fifth place was all that they got out of that race uh, in the shape of Fred Wright. But Aaron Gate, take a bow. Three medals at the track, just outside the medals in the individual time trial. And the winner of the road race. Sensational ride. That was Geraint Thomas being caught by Luke Plapp, but Plapp had a problem. 
all these fast riders closing the gap. Fred Wright was pinned to the front. The last place that he wanted to be was right there. Ben Turner couldn't quite deliver him to the front of the race, couldn't take him deep enough, close enough to the finish line, and he had to sprint from the front, and that was so hard for him here. See there, Fred Wright, he was just trying to hold off the riders behind him. He opened the sprint, he started the sprint, he used the wheel of Lucas Platt, but it was very early, and you can see Aaron Gate of New Zealand. He just had the legs. Daryl Limpy switches wheels, but he doesn't get on the wheel of Aaron Gate, and he just powers away to take the victory here in Birmingham for the Commonwealth Games, his fourth gold medal. Well, it's unreal how much finishing speed Aaron Gate has got for a, a track pursuiter par excellence. Aaron Gate's finishing pace there was just blistering. Well, as he builds on his endurance. Individual pursuit winner, the team pursuit winner, and the winner of the points race as well. Aaron Gate has won the road race. Well, I wouldn't be at all surprised if we see Aaron Gate back riding at World Tour level on the road after what he's just demonstrated at the Commonwealth Games here by taking the gold medal. At the moment, uh, having been released a number of years ago by the Aqua Blue Sport team, having raced the Vuelta on a couple of times uh, for a couple of editions, he has uh, not found a level of road racing above uh, domestic continental racing in New Zealand. But surely there's more to come from Aaron Gates. He may be 31 years of age, but he's never been riding this well. He's in the form of his life, and uh, he'll want to see his family who are over here supporting him. <laughs> so excited. New Zealand certainly have done exceptionally well at this Commonwealth Games. And I don't think Aaron Gates surprised himself. I think he might have had the ambition to go out there and win a fourth gold medal today. <laughs> He was just right on everything, wasn't he? Every single move that went, he played it very smart. Sometimes he had to put the effort in himself, but he backed himself, he backed his form. <laughs> Certainly a convincing sprint at the finish. Well, he takes the gold medal. Another gold medal. And I wonder if his family are here to see him. They were certainly there at the track. There's uh, Finn Crockett in the orange helmet. He's delighted with his bronze medal. Took one of the most important domestic races this year, the Rutland Melton, Melton Cycle Classic uh, in the domestic scene. But a bronze medal at the Commonwealth Games. Just brilliant. In his first year of racing for the Ribble Welltight uh, team on the domestic scene. This is his first year as a semi-professional rider. Yeah, absolutely delighted. Great teamwork from... Sean Flynn as well. Here's Aaron Gate. Darrell Impey with his uh, silver medal safe. Uh, his first game, his first race in the, uh, his first medal, I should say, in the Commonwealth Games. But Finn Crockett. He's got ice in the back of his skin suit there. Played a very smart race uh, as well. And Darren Gate. We'll say what we said after his uh, previous three gold medals. It looks like he could go out there and do it again. Fresh yep. as a daisy. Well, you can see here he came off the wheel of Darrell and Peak, straight down the middle of the road, putting all the power through the pedals. Aaron Gate, just about to collect his fourth medal at the Commonwealth Games here in Birmingham, 2022. There it is, Aaron Gate. Four gold medals. What a stunning performance. Well, Fred Wright in England will be left wondering if they could have done anything different there. England Road, a textbook race all the way throughout. I don't think they could have done anything more. It's just the way the race went. They tried everything they possibly could. Excellent race as well from Matt Teggart of Northern Ireland. Uh, Fred Wright, the best of the English trio of riders in that group, finishing in fifth. Luke Plapp. Probably uh, sixth is around about, uh, around about right. Seventh from Ben Turner. Eighth, ultimately, from Garant Thomas, who was always at a slight disadvantage in that race. When he went with 1.7 kilometres to go, it looked like it might be a race-winning move. Uh, but ultimately, it was, the, it was the race of England and Ben Turner that dragged everybody else back to Garant Thomas. 
Yeah, it's kind of a little bit disappointing for England, isn't it? They rode so well, so hard throughout the whole race, but other riders just playing it a little smarter. Well, I think ultimately, Rochelle, it was, um, we were saying it earlier, we were surprised at how big that group was going into the last 10 kilometers. England had, had repeatedly started to attack from over 40 kilometers out, but there were still 11 riders there. Yeah, in theory, having the three uh, English riders there so strong, you would have thought they'd be able to just keep counter-attacking, but they ran out of legs. They did a lot of work to establish the break, yeah. and then towards the end of the race, just ran out of legs and power. And the closer you get to the finish, the more energy all the other riders were getting, seeing that those medals were still available. A lot of food left in the pocket there. Oh, Finn the Crockett, who took the bronze medal. Very proud moment for the Scottish rider. Probably didn't eat enough by the look of his uh, gels in his pocket. But he can deal with that later. This was a big move from Lucas Platt. Well, these uh, riders just coming in now. We're, we're in that uh, chase group. You remember the Jack Bauer group, Mark Stewart as well. And uh, battling out, battling it out for the minor places. Miles, Miles Scottson, Scottson uh, the Australian from Groupama FTJ. Just checks and uh, gets the better of Mark Stewart and Jack Bauer. Fun and games, but ultimately they counter-attacked a little bit too late, that group. And uh, they were never really realistically, I don't think, going to get across to that 15 rider group. Well, one they're thing not there yet. Been... They're still playing cat and mouse. I thought they were close to the finish line. Still a little way to go. It's like a track sprint. It is. Who are you going to back? My money's on Jack Bauer. Well, from here, I think Miles Scott's not on the back. Perhaps a Bauer on the back now. Here he goes. Whoa. Let's have a look at the sprint Scott's for the minor places. Scott's have got the jump on them. Mark Stewart getting on his wheel. The Scotsman. Can he get round? Miles Scott's and Scott's and looks round, checks. It's going to be. Scotson who takes the very minor honours there in the Commonwealth Games. Crowd enjoyed that, putting on a bit of a show. And uh, Australia missing out on this occasion, but Jack Bauer will maybe not even know that his teammate Aaron Gate has won the race. Well, here's the group of uh, the main peloton, Mark Cavendish. Yeah, one rider who you won't see sprinting here will be Mark Cavendish. Well, he's looking around, wondering what's going on, as top ten places are already handed out. But uh, he'll be quite disappointed. Yeah. As right. you see, New Zealand teammates just uh, raising their hand in celebration across the line there. Well done to all these riders. They made it to the finish, which can't be said for all of the riders. Eight minutes down. What a day. What an exciting race. What a hard race. It was very attritional. Settled down uh, for the middle section, but it never really slowed up. Gaps between Group 1 and Group 2 were never that substantial, so the pressure was applied the whole way round. Well, there's Daryl and Pete. No doubt a little bit disappointed, as he had a very big chance. But I guess he can't be disappointed, being, being beaten so convincingly by Aaron Gate at the finish. I what else would he do? It would have been something of a surprise to him just how comfortable a margin Aaron Gate had in that sprint because Darren Limpy is a very, very fast finisher. And, uh, but nonetheless, he's got a Commonwealth silver medal and uh, he'll take that home to South Africa. He's had a disappointing year, though, in a number of ways. Darren Limpy was going to go to the Tour de France but tested positive for COVID, or rather failed to test negative having had COVID just on the on the eve of uh, the Tour de France final selection being made and had to stay at home. Aaron Gay just enjoying uh, handing out some autographs. Thank you very much. Cheers. I haven't seen evidence of Aaron Gates' family yet. Yeah. Shake of the hands from the Australian manager, Rick Fulcher, and the Australian team staff. As much as Ned's tried to build up a rivalry between New Zealand and Australia, they are very close. Family-like. We did it, Sorry. Jump in, Paul. Hold on, mate. And Gay to the side, Alex. Seeing a couple of riders over the line, saluting 
uh, the crowd here. Mark Lett from Gibraltar has just finished. Being instructed over to the mix zone. We might hear some words from Aaron Gate a little bit later as we just see the scenes of the uh, beautiful location. Green racing out here today. What a crowd did we see along the uh, road today. Absolutely amazing the amount of people that came out on this beautiful day to watch the men's road race. So this is the last two kilometers, in, just inside the last two kilometers, uh, kilometers, Rochelle. This was the big attack from Geraint Thomas and he opened up an immediate gap, which he had to do. He had to attack so hard. Here's the front of the race where Sam Watson and Sam Culverwell were. And at this point, with everyone else out of the frame, you thought, ooh, he could take this all the way to the line. Yeah, it would have been ideal if he had have left it a little bit later. But in saying that, he couldn't because he had those two riders that were broken away and he had to use them for a little bit of uh, a slipstream and that little bit more of a boost to get him to the line. And you can see there, there was too many fast sprinters back in the peloton, or should we say small group at the front. But ultimately, you could argue that this attack from Geraint Thomas ultimately led to England coming away potentially empty-handed. Because well, as a result of this move, everybody looked at England, and it was Ben Turner who had to get on the front from a long way out and uh, chase down his teammate Geraint Thomas. Well, in fact, I think it was Lucas Platt that closed this down, the Australian who took a big flyer after Geraint Thomas. Well, t yeah, because Turner kind of stalled. He's on the front now with Fred Wright on his wheel. But Sam Watson, having just been caught and off the front, England have now only got two riders left in it, effectively. Turner's turning himself inside out to uh, close this gap down, which ultimately would lead to Fred Wright being exposed a long way out. But you're right, Luke Plapp, Luke Plapp is about to, off the wheels of Ben Turner, launch a big counter-attack. There he comes. Um, just when he sensed, I think, that Ben Turner couldn't quite close the gap, although Turner's right on his wheel. Uh, Fred Wright is on his wheel now, but he's exposed. Well, that was the thing. Lucas Platt had a great move, as did Geraint Thomas. But Fred Wright, being a sprinter, he was exposed, but he's trying to hold off the riders behind him. He's trying to leave that gap. And there laid the problem. He had to go when he did, which was very, very early. And we see Aaron Gate not waiting. He just went off the wheel of Daryl Impey. And as we said, he looked so good during oh. the final lap of this race. He was covering all the moves. And still pulling clear as he coasted across the line with his arms in the air. Spectacular finishing speed from Aaron Gate. I'd sign him if I had uh, was uh, running a cycling team, Rochelle, on the basis of what we'd seen. I'd give him a chance back at World Tour level. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he'd be capable of green jersey at World Tour level after a couple more years of experience in uh, Grand Tours and uh, tr changing his training from uh, the four kilometre pursuit and team's pursuit there are the final standings Aaron Gate from New Zealand Daryl Impey great race for the South African and Finn Crockett from Scotland he is very very proud to be on the podium here at the Birmingham Commonwealth Games 2022 Culverwell excellent ride for him for Guernsey Sean Flynn paid his part um, Sam Watson as well from England and uh, a huge ride from Morny van Niekerk a big contributing factor to uh, Daryl Impey's silver medal Ben Swift will be disappointed with that 15th place, though. Jack Bauer tried to get across to the front of the race, but uh, New Zealand won the gold medal anyway. Patrick Bevin as well. These were riders back in the uh, peloton. Red Walters were so strong from Grenada early on. All these riders finished in the main, in the main peloton, including from Belize, Oscar Quiros, who um, that's a much better result from him. 27th place in the road race. He struggled a little bit in the individual time trial. And uh, Rwanda worked so hard when they realised that the break had gone and that they'd missed it to try and drag it back with their entire team on the front, ultimately to no avail. Jersey and Guernsey in their own little individual battle for the honours. Well, Guernsey absolutely bossed it, frankly, with their top ten finish uh, from Sam Caldwell. Mark Cavendish coming in in 44th place over the line, not bothering with this sprint for the minor placings. 
Connor Swift, one of the England team, he was back in the uh, in the peloton. Luke Rowe tried to set it up for Geraint Thomas ultimately to get in the move, and uh, that part of the plan worked. Owen Dool likewise, his Welsh teammate. Jake Stewart uh, briefly tried to get across in that group with Jack, ba Jack Bauer, but ultimately uh, sat up and dropped back to the peloton and finished in the main group. Joe Holt was very aggressive for Wales right at the beginning of the race. Mark Lett has finished from uh, Gibraltar. 